and other Aboriginal language groups who are present today. Council also acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Blunt in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, members. Be seated. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, council members, uh, we have actually managed to get the live streaming working again, so we're uh, going live. Um, I'm sure there are no apologies or leaves of absence to this evening. It takes us to item number four, which is confirmation of minutes from the 26th. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, those in favour? Or are there any adjustments? Sorry, members, any changes to minutes? No, there being none. Those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Uh, deputations tonight. We have four deputations this evening um, that have been approved by uh, four to come forward and talk to us. The first being Mr. Andrew Kerr. Uh, the subject matter being Park 27B toilet facilities. Mr. Kerr, if you'd like to come forward to the microphone. Thank you, well, uh, you have uh, five minutes. Lord Mayor and Councillors, my name's Andrew Kerr and I'm the Treasurer of the Park Terrace Community Garden. I'd like to talk to the submission and the 386 signature petition for the installation of a standalone public toilet in Park 27B. <laughs> the garden is situated in Park 27B, which is which was opened in July 2016. For those of you who might not know where the park is, I'm talking about the area opposite Jama's restaurant of Park Terrace. The garden is incorporated in an area constructed by Renewal SA which also has barbecues, play equipment, skate park and floodlit tennis and basketball courts with the floodlights staying on to after 11pm nightly. On most nights there's anywhere between 10 and 50 people using the facility as long as it's not raining. The reason for our submission and petition is that there is no public toilet in the park and on at least 27 occasions since the garden opened People have defecated in the children's maze, which have had to clean up and remove. And on a nightly basis, users of the park can be seen urinating in the garden precinct. Due to the grave hygiene concerns, the members of the Park Terrace Community Garden would like the council to look at our submission most favourably and prioritise the installation of a standalone public toilet during the 2019-20 budget year. And the, uh, as a matter of urgency. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Uh, the next deputation will be from the Honourable Tung Yo, the uh, ML, L, MLC, pardon, co chair of the Vietnamese Boat People Monument Association. Good evening, Tung Yo. Thank you. Um, Your Worship, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, councillors and staff, uh, thank you for the opportunity to address council uh, tonight about the Vietnamese Boat People Monument. Uh, this monument tells the story of over a million uh, Vietnamese people who left Vietnam fleeing our war-torn home. We threw ourselves to the mercy of the sea to find new home, somewhere safe to live, free from war, terror and corruption. I left home not knowing uh, where I would land or if I would land. Thankfully, somehow we arrived in South Australia and were rescued from a sinking boat after we were attacked by pirates and left for dead. The South Australian community uh, welcomed us with, with uh, open arms. It is that welcome the luck that I felt and the hope 
and possibility that Australia represented to me and others that this monument captures. Um, for me, the proposed location by the Torrens River at the end of Kinto Avenue is the ideal location for the monument. Firstly, as the last Australian state to build a Vietnamese boat people monument, I believe we must place it in a central and accessible location. Secondly, and importantly, this location connects the monument with water. Water is an essential um, element of the monument. It represents the passage of water um, that we face during our journey. Thirdly, this position is adjacent to the Torrens um, Parade uh, Ground and the Anzac Memorial Walk, places where we commemorate and remember those that fought and those who fell, including those from the Vietnam War. The war and boat people are connected in history and together significantly shape our region and the psyche of our nations. Placing the uh, monument across the road from the Vietnam War Memorial will uh, relate these events physically, respecting their interconnectedness. The monument space is large at 15 by 4 metres. However, it is designed to gently sit upon the earth and enhance its surroundings in accord with the natural environment. The monument is a landscape itself. The audience will be able to interact with the monument, moving around it and within it, exploring it from different angles and positions. The design will not inhabit um, heartland use. Instead, the monument will invite people into the greenery to enjoy the open space. This monument will not obstruct views of the river, but will add to the interest and activate this area of the riverbank. Throughout my discussions with local stakeholders along the riverbank, they were all of the same views. While the monument recognises Vietnamese boat people, its design is symbolic. It is not representational of Vietnamese cultural design or imagery. Therefore, it can be appreciated and enjoyed by people of all cultures. In fact, my hope is that the monument provides an emotional, emotionally uplifting and contemplative place for all visitors to reflect and be at peace. Whether they are responding to the story of Vietnamese boat people or simply the energy and emotion of the monument and its surroundings. I hope it will encourage visitors to think about their own journey and lives. Thanks very much. Third deputation tonight is from uh, Ms. Louise Miller Frost, um, and it's relating to item 11.5, the motion on notice from Councillor Hyde around homelessness. Thank you. Lord Mayor, councillors, I want to thank you for this opportunity to address you. My name is Louise Miller Frost. I'm the CEO of Catherine House, which is a women's homelessness service here in the CBD. However, I'm also co chair of Zero Project, and it's in that role that I'm speaking to you today. I'm speaking in support of Councillor Hyde's motion on notice about funding for homelessness. Last night, 123 people were sleeping rough in the Adelaide CBD. Some of them you might see as you walk around the streets of Adelaide. Further 28 who were previously sleeping rough were in crisis accommodation. Zero Project is groundbreaking in a few ways. Firstly, all of the inner city homelessness agencies are working together with the community housing providers and along with support from Adelaide City Council and the SA Government. The Lord Mayor and Minister Lensing chair the strategic project group and Adelaide City Council is involved in the business alliance part of the project. We also have support from Dame Louise Casey, the Chair of the Institute of Global Homelessness, and Noni Brennan from All Chicago. 
It is through them that Adelaide was named one of the 12 vanguard cities of the world and the first in Australia. Other capital cities in Australia are looking to Adelaide to see what we are doing here. And I'm hoping that you had all uh, received Dame Louise's, uh, Dame Louise's report previously. We have universities on board providing evidence-based input as well as, as well as evaluation. But really importantly, Zero is looking across the homelessness journey and focusing on prevention and recovery, support services to make sure that people can move on from the experience of homelessness as well as the housing outcomes. We are looking at why people become homeless and how we can go upstream and prevent people falling into homelessness in the first place. Housing outcomes are really important as well, but if we can slow the flow of people coming into homelessness, then we'll be moving towards a sustainable solution. Last May, we held our first Connections Week, where volunteers engaged with every homeless person they could find in the Adelaide CBD. We talked to them, found out their name, their story, their health and other needs, and whether they were engaged with agencies at the time. We now have a by name list, which is shared data amongst the agencies and lists every person we know to be homeless in the CBD, where they are, what they need and their level of vulnerability. The agencies then work together in a housing allocation committee to find housing and supports for each of these people individually. The information is live, it's constantly updated. This is a really important part of resolving homelessness for these people sleeping rough. And I'm pleased to tell you that as of mid-February, 108 people have been housed through the Zero project alone since Connections Week last year. This work, however, requires funding. Don Dunson Foundation is the backbone agency that is coordinating and running Zero Project, working with all the agencies, working with the Business Alliance, working with council and the state government. However, it's not sufficiently funded to do this work. We know that people living on the street is a costly exercise, both in lost human potential and the impact on their lives, but also the cost to the community. 2016 data from Queensland University showed that it was $13,000 a year per person cheaper to maintain people in supported housing, that's social housing with support services, than to maintain them on the streets in terms of costs to local government and state government services. The funding that we are seeking will go to supporting Zero to achieve its outcomes. It reflects the recommendations from Dame Louise Casey's report. It will fund the data platform for the by name list. It will fund continuation of the annual Connections Week. It will fund an emergency fund, which is small amounts of funding to overcome barriers for people going into housing. It will fund a private rental initiative to increase the pool of housing outcomes through bringing in private landlords. It will fund the development of an inner city services hub and other strategies in Dame Louise's report. All of this aims to help people currently homeless in Adelaide off the streets, resuming their lives as productive members of the community. I commend to you Councillor Hyde's motion on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Um, the fourth deputation tonight is Mr Jamison Stoller, who's uh, talking to the item on skating at Victoria Square. Mr Stoller, thank you. Uh, hello, thank you to the Lord Mayor and the councillors for this opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Jamie Stoller and I'm here on behalf of Ice Rings Australia and Skating Out Festivals. The Skating Out Festival is a national winter festival comprising of outdoor ice skating, ice slides, rides, food and beverages. We aim to offer families in Adelaide a fun and exciting event during the winter school holidays and a chance for kids, families and all of Adelaide to experience a European style winter festival right in the heart of Adelaide. Uh, in 2018, we held this event for the first time in Adelaide. We attracted over 15,000 ice skaters into the city, as well as thousands more who came through the event as observers or to enjoy the food and beverage or other event offerings, as well as the restaurants and activities in the surrounding area. We received an enormous amount of positive feedback from locals about the event last year, including an article in the Advertiser, uh, praising our initiatives in making the event fully accessible and, and prioritising children with disabilities through our partnership with Variety, the children's charity. In order to put this event on, we also hired more than 25 local South Australians uh, to staff the event, as well as contracting almost exclusively local companies to deliver the various event services and infrastructure required to put on this event. 
We ask that an event permit is once again granted for us to deliver skating at Victoria Square in 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stoller. Um, that is the uh, that concludes the deputations for tonight. Then, as we go to item six on the agenda, six point one is uh, the to note the petition. If I could have someone please to move. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Seconded, Councillor Hyde. Uh, is there any discussion at all? If not, thank you. Um, if I can have that accepted, those in favour, those cancelled. Thank you. That is accepted. Um, Members, that takes us to item seven on the agenda, um, the recommendations of, oh sorry, report of committee. Um, and we have recommendation of the committee from the 5th of March. Uh, first recommendation is North Adelaide on street parking, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move an alternative motion. Yes, it's, uh, it's shown. I can read it if that is the uh, desire of the meeting. Sorry, can Sorry. I just have a second? I was looking down with Councillor Coros. I think we're that. Sorry, I saw them both go at the same time. I was looking at Councillor Martin. Sorry, I both second <laughs> Well, I'm happy That's to have as many money. seconders as you like. You're a member. Yes. If you would like to speak to it. Thank you. Thank you um, is it necessary for me to read out the, uh, the motion? Okay. Um, the motion is the same as printed, with the exception of two, which reads approves a trial of relaxing residential parking permit criteria within the trial area as detailed in attachment A to item 4.1 on the agenda for the meeting of the committee held on March 5th, 2019. In addition to one, the issue of one on-street parking permit for a period of one year to a nominated vehicle registered to a dwelling which has only one off-street parking space such permits will be made available on application and will be limited to one for each address except in special circumstances as may be determined by the administration. Mm -hmm. Two, on-street permits as described in one allowing parking in designated areas for a period of up to 24 hours. Three, permits as described in one will initially be limited to 1,200. For an application of a fee for permits described in one that will include administrative costs and an additional sum of not more than $100. For the identification of areas with alterations to existing signage where permits described in one can be used. Um, and uh, um, actually, I think I have my numbering wrong, Lord Mayor. I think it's four, then five, and then what I'm reading is six. Immediate planning for the introduction no later than the end of 2019 of a scheme to allow business ratepayers access to on street permits in designated areas currently utilised by commuter parking. And at three, I've replaced the uh, sum nominated by the administration to, with the words such funds uh, because the alteration will involve some expense to science and therefore the amount needs to be altered. Thank you. And members, it is correct on the screen, so the numbers have been corrected. Oh, that's Martin. great. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you. I may speak to this? Thank you. Okay. Look, the, uh, the principal recommendation of the administration uh, referred to in uh, the first item is that uh, commuter parking in the streets of North Adelaide uh, with uh, uh, unrestricted and 10-hour parking signs uh, will be removed to the extent of 50% over a trial period of one year uh, in selected streets. And I emphasise selected streets, which will be subject to discussion with elected members. Additionally, there will be a loosening of the conditions around on-street parking so that residents and part-time residents with no on-street parking, no on-street parking at all, uh, will get two permits. Two if your house was built before 76 and one if your house was built after 76. Um, this attachment, by the way, uh, to 1976 uh, remains, in my view, inequitable, but uh, let's move on. 
Uh, I think on the plus side is that there's some action on commuter parking, which is a problem for North Adelaide and uh, has been for many years for residents and for businesses. Um, but there is a downside in what is proposed uh, by the administration, and that is there will be a lessening of parking available to residents. Um, and so the amendment seeks to uh, uh, provide a concession to North Adelaide uh, ratepayers by providing to them a parking space where they may have previously been able to uh, park on the street. But it also addresses uh, one of the problems for many ratepayers, and that is that with just one car parking space, they are unable to accommodate the vehicles. And this is particularly an issue for families, and I know there are people in the public gallery who have this issue. That is to say, they have family members who have vehicles, and so those vehicles are parked on the street playing the two-hour shuffle. Uh, it is enormously expensive and inconvenient. Now, um, this, uh, this amendment here, this alternative motion, also prescribes for what is long overdue in my view, and that is for the introduction by the end of this year of a on-street permit scheme for business ratepayers. Um, we don't have any way of accommodating business ratepayers, uh, and for a suburb where buildings were constructed at a time when people used to tether their horses to the front, um, it's no surprise that there were no car parks provided. And so uh, those people are part of the problem for North Adelaide. That is to say, businesses have nowhere to park. And so they must resort to the streets that are reserved for customers and for residents. Now, um, there are schemes that are designed to assist business rate payers. They operate well in places like the city of Yarra and countless other cities in Australia. May I just have 30 seconds more? Okay. 30 seconds, thank you, members. Thank you. Um, and in those areas, it is possible to accommodate um, business. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, um, I mentioned a moment ago, there are people in the public gallery who feel these issues acutely. Um, this represents an attempt to address some of their concerns. It may not please everyone, but I have to say to you, in discussion and negotiation with my fellow councillors, this is the best possible outcome that we can negotiate at this time. And I would ask all members to support this, recognising that this is probably the most important thing we can do for the ratepayers of North Adelaide at this time. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, now, I did actually see two hands go up at once. Um, I, can't, I cannot say how delighted I am to see my North Ward councillors working together. The governance did actually say they saw Councillor Moran's hand up first. So I'll go to Councillor Moran first and then go to you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you. Normally, I wouldn't care about who seconds us, and I'm very glad that Mary is supporting this. Um, however, I've worked on this parking strategy now for the best part of three years. Uh, with Phil and sometimes not with Phil. Uh, we both live, uh, work and recreate in North Adelaide and we know this parking situation extremely well. Um, there was a misinformation um, before the election that I wasn't supporting Phil's amendments. I certainly was. What I didn't want was to Phil to move his amendment, lose it, and then we'd end up just before an election with a very flawed, in my mind, administration recommendation. Not flawed, it, only that it didn't go far enough. And I think uh, I was right in doing that because we'd have we'd now be having to go back and add this to an existing situation which would have kept our uh, ratepayers very unhappy. The administration report is good. It goes a certain way to what we need. Um, uh, Councillor Martin's uh, amendment is very good. It goes a little bit further. My aim would be eventually um, have all car owners that own cars now to have a residential sticker because the cars fit in now. They happily fit in. Every car that is owned by a North Adelaide resident ratepayer fits into North Adelaide now whether it be off street or on street. Uh, what we're doing now is taking cars out. It was also suggested, how could you support something that brought more cars in? This is taking cars out of North Adelaide, taking the commuter um, parker out of North Adelaide to give more room for our residents. So ideally, 
I would like everybody to have an on-street parking sticker that they can use at their, um, at their choice. I also want all the unlimited areas uh, to be limited. I live in Mills Terrace that is designated now as an unlim uh, to remain an unlimited area. I will now have a street where all the commuter parkers will go to park their cars because they've been squeezed into ever decreasing uh, so my, my life will become quite difficult. I won't be able to find a car park anyway. So this is what I tried to avoid um, before. But Phil's motion has um, has really covered off a lot of my questions. And we can easily, once this work and we throw up a few more questions, uh, we can fine tune it. So it goes a long way down there. But as I said, the reason I so vigorously wanted to second it, because as the Lord Mayor knows, I've been working on this very assiduously, and I think I deserve to have my name on this on this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan, Councillor Kouros, and then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to reiterate a lot of the things that um, uh, Councillor Moran and, and uh, Councillor um, Martin have said, but in a personal uh, note, when I was door knocking North Adelaide during the election, the single biggest issue brought up by the residents and businesses is the parking in North Adelaide. And, you know, well, Mayor, you know, they are all very sick and tired of, you know, with what is happening and with what is happening in North Adelaide and it, the, it being treated like um, a, a commuter's parking and then going into the C uh, CBD. So uh, residents want to be able to enjoy the suburb and they want their family and their visitors uh, to, to come and visit them and businesses want customers to be able to do the same for their for their customers to come into the area and to be able to enjoy it. So we have to find that balance between the two, between the businesses and the residents. And I think this motion, an amended motion that uh, Councillor Martin has brought in, it does that and it gives us the opportunity uh, to, to trial it, see how, see how it goes. We, we want to see you know, less and less city users using North Adelaide as a car park. I believe what has been proposed, like I said, would diminish that and it will free up the streets for the residents and the businesses. And I, as they keep telling me during the election when I was campaigning that they want a solution and they want it, and they want it now. So I think this delivers that. I think it's great. And thank you for the amendment to Councillor Martin and, uh, and uh, support it fully. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment. I wish to move to insert a new point five. That is that the money collected from the $100 permit fee will be allocated towards cycling infrastructure in the city and North Adelaide. I will look for a seconder. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, it's, it's wonderful to uh, see Council working together on um, what has been a, a wicked dilemma, I know, in um, particular in North Adelaide. But, um, and whilst I'm supportive of, um, of Councillor Martin's approach to this, I do think we need to look at how we can um, encourage active transport in the city of Adelaide. And um, the reality is that uh, more cars on the road do uh, contribute significantly to carbon emissions. In fact, a typical road vehicle uh, emits about 4.6 tonnes of carbon dioxide each year. That's according to the United States Environment Agency. And so whilst I, I don't object to uh, this motion, asking residents to make a small contribution towards investing in uh, cycling infrastructure in the city is a way of uh, offsetting that and recognises the uh, impact of um, motor vehicles on our roads. So I encourage Council to support this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Just, just before you finish, can I just confirm that this is correct? On the screen? Yes, that's correct. Oh, sorry, in, in the city and North Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Councillor Donovan. Um, I'm supporting this amendment because, as we've discussed in the Chamber previously, part of the issue of any of these uh, infrastructure changes that we're looking at is that they do require structural consideration. And one of those structural considerations is where do we get the funding from? And I think a, a small measure like this to allocate the funding to simply means that we gradually build up our own cycling infrastructure fund. So we can look to that and annually we know we have 
at the very minimum this this set budget that we can allocate to um, to building up our cycling infrastructure which we know is going to yield all sorts of benefits for our city as we've previously discussed so i don't need to go on and on about that um, and so i absolutely commend this little addition to councillor martin's motion for us to be considering these things strategically structurally to allocate the money so we have this in place ready to fund next time we're looking at a improvement towards our cycling infrastructure thank you members would anybody else like to speak to the amendment no oh sorry councillor Hyde. thank you lord mayor i just have a quick question for admin how many permits do you expect to be issued um, once this is adopted see you Three, Lord Mayor, I understand there's a limit of 1,200, so potentially 1,200 permits. So, so this will raise $120,000 max? Is that annually? Yeah. Yep, that's correct. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? If not, I'll ask the move to sum up. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, look, as Councillor um, Hyde has identified, it will raise around $120,000. But over a council term, that could be a significant amount. And it's towards cycling infrastructure. It's meant to be complementary. It's really just in recognition of the, the fact that, you know, cars on the roads contribute to carbon. Um, and we have had a long discussion here at this council previously about finding it difficult to uh, find money for cycling. And uh, this is a way that we can generate some more money to uh, invest in that regard. So uh, it would be an exciting green initiative, one that I think would um, really be a, a great addition to our approach to parking in the city. And um, I encourage councillors to seize this opportunity and um, to get on board with this amendment. Thank you. Councillors, I now put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Uh, <laughs> Those members voting in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Thank you. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Sims. So that's been declared against. I'll just, is there any further debate on the amendment put forward by Councillor Martin, a Deputy Lord Mayor? Just to make a quick comment, look, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Councillor Martin for taking some of the feedback on board. I think this is a real improvement. Uh, as Councillor Martin mentioned, and Councillor Moran mentioned also before, it's been more than three years in the making. Uh, I think I was told before by admin that if this is going to make it over the line today, they're going to go up and do a bit of a dance for us in the middle here. So uh, I think that's a real awesome outcome. And it's a <laughs> dance. And I think it's an awesome outcome for our community as well. But I think the most important thing here to note uh, is, as mentioned before, North Adelaide has been treated as a parking lot for the CBD. And by putting these restrictions in place, we have to identify very quickly that there's a significant impact on residents and businesses as a result of the changes of timed uh, zones within North Adelaide. With that in mind, the residents that are going to be impacted now under this arrangement, if they do not have off-street parking, they will get a permit. If they've got one off-street park, they will also get a permit. Uh, anyone that has more than that will not get a permit. But also what I like about this motion is that it's nominated to a, to a specific vehicle registered as that dwelling as well, uh, which means there isn't any opportunities where people are passing on permits to others. Um, and I think you know our administration will be able to police that a bit better and work through it. But also to note that this is a trial uh, and through that opportunity, we'll be able to, I'm sure, get a lot more feedback from the community on what's working and what not. So it'll be really important for us to be nimble, to be responsive and to be able to feed that information back to council for us to hopefully deliver on what would be considered a good pilot to then roll out across other aspects of the city if there's a requirement for us to do so. So I'd ask members to support this motion. And uh, I also uh, acknowledge uh, people that have joined us this evening. And I think uh, it's fantastic that we've brought this through um, and hopefully have that resolved tonight after many years. Um, and also uh, acknowledge Councillor Moran for the work that she did in the previous term of council. Um, I will go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. And yes, look, I do want to acknowledge uh, the help over the years of Councillor Moran, who has fought vigorously for this concession. And uh, I also uh, acknowledge the conversations that have occurred today. 
Now, um, in uh, all likelihood, there will be some people who think this doesn't go far enough. And frankly, I would like it to go further. Um, but politics is the art of compromise. And I think this represents a compromise that we can all live with. More particularly, it is uh, for the time being, uh, if this is approved, the end of a long debate. I saw Councillor Kira wiping a tear, I think it was a tear from his eye then. And I feel similarly, Lord Mayor, I, see, I feel similarly because I mean, we've been through so much, so many public consultations, so many workshops. Um, you know, the words North Adelaide Parking Review have been on agenda in this council for a very, very long time. So I, I ask members um, if they put their hands up to vote in favour of anything tonight, vote in favour of this and you will have the gratitude of North Adelaide. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Well done, members. I'm looking forward to uh, Director Mocker doing that dance for us in a short while. That takes us to recommendation number two, which is the proposal for scaling at uh, Victoria Square. It will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Seconder, please. Members, oh, Councillor High, Councillor Moran, did you speak to him? No, I was just being self explanatory. Thank you, Councillor High, did you wish to speak? Thank you, members. Ah. Councillor Jonathan? Oh, no? Uh, there being uh, no discussion, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Moran? Summed up with me. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to recommendation three, which is the delegation under the Liquor Licensing Act, uh, the Traffic Act, and South Australian Public Health Act. Look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. A seconder. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, Lord Mayor. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Members? No? Back to the moment, Councillor Moran. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes us to 7.2, which is the advice and recommendation of the Reconciliation Committee. Uh, we're taking in two parts. First is the advice around the Reconciliation Committee. Councillor Sims, a seconder, please. Members, uh, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to her? No. Councillor Donovan, no. Members, no. If not, go back to Councillor Sims. Thank you. If I could have a vote, please. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, part two, our uh, recommendation is the stretch route 2018 to 2021. Uh, um, Progress report. Councillor Sims, thank you. A seconder, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims? Summed up. Thank you. Summed up? <laughs> I, do, I will just go to the floor to see if anybody else would like to speak to her. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims. Summed up. Summed up. <laughs> Moving quickly tonight. Uh, those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to uh, item 8.1, which is the e-scooter trial. Councillor Hyde, do you wish to move the motion? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an alternative motion, which has rather conveniently appeared on the screen. Would you like me to read that? Uh, yes, and I'll look for a second. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I would like to move that Council notes the success and popularity of the e-scooter share program trial over the festival period proves that a second e-scooter trial be undertaken for three months, beginning immediately after the cessation of the current trial. Undertake an expression of interest for two e-scooter operators for the second trial, including increased provision for safety on footpaths. And request administration work with DIPTI to extend the current boundary of the e-scooter regulations to include the whole city of Adelaide and to investigate the viability of allowing e-scooters in bicycle lanes. Oh, yes. Sorry? Oh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hyde, if you'd like to speak to that. Thank you. Um, well, what a success it's been, the e-scooter trial. We've had tens of thousands uh, of trips now um, across tens of thousands of um, individual users. And I think this has been a great success for our city over the festival period, um, noting that we are beset with events everywhere and it's often difficult to get 
um, from A to B in a timely manner. We often have clashing shows. Um, visitors to our city might be uh, going to dinner, but also needing to catch a fringe show um, on the other side of town. And I think this has been a great a success in, in getting people to where they need to be and getting them quickly. It's really been about busting congestion in the city. Um, so uh, what we've seen is, is less reliance uh, on taxis that obviously contribute greatly to greenhouse gas emissions, um, uh, uh, which is, uh, it, you know, reducing that is in line with our green pillar uh, as part of our strategic plan. Um, and uh, it's been about gaining efficiencies as well. Um, certainly I've been safe from being late to some events um, coming back from work where I sadly have to use a car and can't use an e-scooter yet. Um, uh, but also about increasing accessibility to the far-flung corners of the city, which really have just as much value and just as much beauty as, uh, if not in some instances, more beauty than the CBD. Um, but of course, people don't know uh, about that because they've never had a reason or had the ability to go and whiz past and have a look. So um, for a South Ward councillor, certainly I've seen a lot more people around my patch down in Hutt Street um, and uh, I've seen them parking their e-scooters out front of restaurants and going in um, and having a bite to eat and whizzing off back to the fringe. Um, I've seen the same when, when I was using an e-scooter to visit Sturt Street and Gilbert Street and the businesses along there as well. Um, so I think we've, we've facilitated uh, guests and visitors in to our city in, in what is a very busy period, we've leveraged that busyness. Uh, we've facilitated them discovering other parts of the city, um, uh, which I think is very important. Certainly, certainly it is um, for my precinct. Now, uh, this motion uh, I think is a is a good step forward. Um, I think at this point in time, we've uh, seen a massive behaviour change um, in how people are navigating the city. And we need to push on with that because I think if we pull uh, e-scooters from the roads uh, at the end of this current trial, we'll be having a huge step um, backwards. And I think we'll be sending the wrong message to all those visitors and, and noting that some of them are interstate and international visitors. We'll be sending the wrong message to them um, that uh, even though this has been such a great success, um, noting some bumps and scratches here and there, um, that, that we're not interested in moving forward. And I think Adelaide, we're in the 21st century and, and we need to start acting like it. So um, once we move, uh, assuming this is successful, um, to undertake the second expression of interest process, uh, looking at how the first one unfolded and, and the decision-making process there and the thoroughness, if I could have one more minute, please. Thank you. Um, I have utmost confidence in the administration's ability to conduct a thorough uh, and rigorous and transparent expression of interest process, um, fine-tuning it as they may need to, um, going off what we've learned for the last, uh, from the last few weeks. Um, uh, finally, uh, if I can move to the to the two e-scooter component here, um, noting that there were some concerns, I think many of those concerns can be addressed um, by looking at looking at that. Uh, uh, looking at the regulatory environment that we have, but also introducing competition. Competition is not a bad thing, um, and this is very much a startup culture that we're dealing with here. Um, so I think that could be very valuable in upping the standard and upping the bar um, uh, for the operators that, uh, that the city chooses together. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Seniors. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment. I move that we request uh, that council uh, sorry, I add an additional two points at the end of Councillor Hyde's motion. So first, that requested administration investigate the potential for the City of Adelaide to purchase and run a fleet of e-scooters as an income generator for the corporation, and to add requested administration investigate charging a levy on e-scooter rides to generate income for the corporation. to generate income for the corporation. Look for a seconder from the floor, Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I certainly uh, support what um, Councillor Hyde is seeking to achieve here. Um, like Councillor Hyde, I have enjoyed the um, e-scooters during the trial. I think they've been a great innovation for um, our city. I do have some concern, however, about a company based over in San Francisco making a huge profit off the back of this project 
Um, when there is potential, I think, for us to get a slice of the action here in um, Adelaide. And that's why I'm proposing that, we, uh, proposing that we investigate, maybe purchasing a fleet of these scooters ourselves, uh, with the view that we can make a profit off this, and that we also look at charging a levy off e-scooters um, if we do continue to go down the private uh, route. And the reason for doing so is we could potentially make a significant profit through doing that. I've looked at um, what other jurisdictions have done around the world, um, and many do charge a small transaction fee, if you will, of a, of a few percent, um, and that could generate a significant income for the council that we can invest in good works in the city. It does seem unfair to me that we should be supporting a private operator based over in San Francisco to make a lot of money off the back of the people of Adelaide when we could be making some money here and investing that locally. And that's what my amendment is seeking to achieve. Councillor Donovan. Members, Councillor Kerr. Oh, well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I think at this juncture, it's probably worth reflecting uh, on the dangers uh, and recognising uh, when you see Socialism 101. Uh, this is Socialism 101. I think it would be a dreadful idea for the City of Adelaide to send the message to young startups in a, in a venture that is so clearly, uh, that, is, that the market so clearly wants. It would be a dreadful message to send to them that we are going to cut their lunch um, and that uh, and, and and get in the way of a very natural flourishing of a very of an obviously wonderful advancement in transport and I think it's worth reflecting at this point as well upon some of the principles we might want to apply when we consider uh, revenue generating exercises I think those principles should be we do it cautiously prudently we do it where there is market failure and we do it when there is a large infrastructure component this is the very antithesis of infrastructure. This is not the place for the council to be intervening and cutting people's lunches in this way. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, I have a uh, question first of the administration, if I may. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, in advance of tonight's council decision about Lyme, um, I received an invitation to a fringe show, free alcoholic beverages and free food to be provided by Lyme at a hotel in the city tomorrow night. Um, if I accepted that uh, invitation, would I have a conflict of interest? Seriously, no. I'm asking the question seriously. Yeah. I'm not sure why that had to come into the chamber, Councillor Martin. But oh, no, 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 I just want to know whether I need to be in the room or out of it. Oh, sorry. Um, three year, Lord Mayor, if you are receiving gifts or benefits from a provider that we are currently negotiating with, I would believe you'd have a conflict, yes. Okay, it's a good thing I didn't accept it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, uh, actually, just uh, one small thing, if I may, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I am uh, supportive of uh, scooters, e-scooters, as a uh, alternative form of transport in the city. Um, I am a little bit worried, though, about uh, extending uh, the trial. Um, I am an advocate of the free market, and this proposal does not support the free market. It basically says we'll allow two operators to compete in this space, when we know there are at least 10 companies in Australia which are vying for the right to have their scooters operating across the country. Now, um, they may well all, in fact, I guarantee they all want to operate in the city of Adelaide. And so the action of restricting it to two is likely to drive them to other places. So you'll end up with the city of Holfast Bay or the city of Salisbury or somebody else entering into an agreement to a party with a party that has been denied access to the city of Adelaide. It, it would seem to me, and I'm not going to... Uh, uh, propose an alternative motion, but it would seem to me to be a much safer option for the city to be determining a set of criteria, however tight that criteria might be, and then measuring each of the applicants against that criteria. And if there are two, three, four, or none, that's, uh, that's the case. And I think that criteria needs to take into account some of the issues that are arising in other places, which none of this does. 
And uh, I received uh, today a statement from uh, New Zealand, actually, from the Lion executive, Mitchell Price, who I think is the same executive here in Adelaide, um, commenting on how uh, the e-scooters uh, with the software fork, which led to people blowing over the handlebars, have been fixed. Uh, and then he went on to say, it's madness that e-scooters were still being used on footpaths. There is a review currently undergoing with the central government, New Zealand Transport Authority and the Ministry of Transport regarding the use of footpaths, Price said. These scooters are designed for low speed roads and cycleways. And we know that over 50% of our users in Auckland will, will feel safer on a protected cycle path. It is madness that we are still using scooters on footpaths. So there's a big argument and discussion to be had around criteria and indeed the intentions of operators such as Lime who are proposing in New Zealand that they should be used on cycle paths. So this is a really complex issue and some of the issues that have been raised, for example, uh, Councillor Sims suggesting that there could be a fee, um, may well be something that's worth considering in the context of the regulation that may well come with the selection of a provider who has an agenda to use a particular form of carriageway. Um, Lord Mayor, I, I, uh, I suggest that we do need to think about this carefully. The Parliament is wrestling with it. You would be aware that there are several members agitating, um, each of whom have been in contact with me today to say, don't do this, don't do this. I, I think we really need to be cautious about this. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I'll just ask the CEO for a comment. Yep, through you, Lord Mayor. Not wanting to enter the debate in any way, I just need to clarify with you that the recommendation that's been provided to you by the administration is done so to minimise risk to you as a council. That's fundamentally what the recommendation is there for. We need to be aware of probity processes um, and, and I guess credibility of the expression of interest process that we've been through. Um, I believe that um, any diversion of, of the process that has been put in place could be a concern to other providers and you should be aware of that. Um, not to say that the direction being proposed is, is unlawful in any way, it is lawful, um, but there is a, a competitive process that you need to be aware of and where there is a competitive process there is a lot of interest from those providers who will be looking at our processes to ensure that it is entirely appropriate. So I'll just urge you to be fully aware of that before you depart from the administration advice. Thank you, Thank you CEO. Um, Sorry, Councillor Martin, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. assuming that's a question. The administration advice by that the CEO means if you depart from the recommendation of the administration, nothing that's been said separately. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we're actually de debating the alternate motion put forward by Councillor Sims. Did anyone else, one else want to speak to it? Councillor Hyde. Just very quickly, I'd like to say that I think is record time for nationalisation. Um, of a very, very new industry. Um, and I, I, I do think if we adopt this uh, amendment, it does send a very, very poor uh, message to the uh, startup culture that we would love to, to kick off here in Adelaide. Of course, we've got Lot 14 coming in and, and all those sorts of ventures coming to Adelaide with great interest. So I wouldn't want to tell them to go away. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, very briefly, I'm a supportive of the uh, share economy. I think um, it's really exciting to see entrepreneurs coming here to Adelaide. But there is a big question that we need to consider, and, and that is these organisations and businesses that use our roads and the facilities that we all pay for don't necessarily contribute to the commons because normal rate structures and so on don't apply. So all I'm proposing is that we investigate charging a, um, a modest levy on rides to try and generate some um, income for the council that addresses or recognises the fact that they're actually using the public space. I've suggested investigating us looking at purchasing and running a fleet of scooters simply because we know that our revenue from car parking is dwindling and uh, we need to look at alternative uh, opportunities for us to make income for the organisation. This is simply an investigation. If administration looks into it and finds that the business case doesn't make sense, then of course I won't advocate to progress it. But I think we should at least ask the question before we allow private providers to get a monopoly on the market and uh, in effect to um, take the profits overseas, which I think would be a loss for uh, the people of the City of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, members, now I ask you to vote those in favour.
those against, that is lost. We go back to the motion. Uh, is there, are there any other speakers to the motion? Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. Look, um, I'm not going to vote for this. Um, I think the scooters are great and I think they will come back. Um, but at the moment, other cities are struggling with them and there are definite problems. And I, I commend um, Alex for his motion. And I know it's a popular motion. We've been flooded by, um, by people that like them, which has been incredibly annoying. But uh, apart from that, uh, the, star, the administration rarely put up a recommendation like this. They, they're very progressive and try to, they've, they've said, no, it's too risky. Um, if we want scooters in the city, I think we should step back. If we want them permanently, open them up, as um, Councillor Martin said, set out criteria, um, then open the doors to the market. There may well be an Australian provider too that we could encourage. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with this motion, but it's too soon. The deal was at the end of the festival and the fringe that then they would be taken off the street. I've had a lot of complaints about the scooters, so it hasn't been an easy, an easy ride. The way that they, but one of our criteria might be that they don't ride on the footpath. One of the criteria might be that we speed limit them more than they even are now. I don't know. I'm no expert, but I think to rush in and spend. I'm very cautious about the, the fact that we're limiting it to two. Um, of course, with a tiny time frame, that's kind of what we have to do because there's not time to do anything else. So while I commend um, uh, Councillor Hyde for his motion um, and our standard, um, but I think that we should proceed a little bit more cautiously. I think we want to end up with a city, yes, with scooters. They're, they're wildly popular and to be encouraged. But that doesn't mean we have to rush into them incautiously when the administration has suggested that there is significant risk. And we know that there is because we, we know that there have been injuries and so forth. So I say proceed at the administration's advice and let's look at this in a measured, sensible way. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, uh, I speak in favour of this motion, um, but I'm also um, progress with it, I guess, with a bit of cautious because, caution because there's a couple of issues um, that have been brought to my attention. I appreciate the administrative advice around this has to do with reputational and I can see how this could be perceived with an extension of, um, um, of the current trial period immediately and then open up for an expression of interest process, how it could be perceived that we're giving a leg up for one operator over another. And I could definitely appreciate the advice and I'm grateful for the advice. Um, I think it's, it's well put and it's very good advice. The problem we've got is throughout that four week process, we're going to ask an operator to remove all their stock off our street. We're going to stop supply to customers and we're going to ask all their staff to sit down and park um, and just wait. Mind you, they're South Australian staff. There are people employed in this economy. I know councillors talk about shared economies, but it's not for council to take a share of the economy. What we need to do is give back and provide for entrepreneurs to be involved uh, and for them to be able to employ our people and create jobs for them. Granted, this is an overseas company. There's been other models. I mean, Uber is an overseas company. I'm sure many of you are buying on Uber Eats, which are taking 35% of hospitality businesses. I'm not sure if any of us are voting with our feet by going to the businesses directly. So look, I think we've got to really be mindful on how those things are impacting our economy. And we need to be also understanding of what the next stages are. I think that one concern that I still have some reluctance with is the second, is the third part of the motion that talks to an expression of interest for two e-scooter operators. I do support a free economy and I'm very open to having multiple operators operate in the city of Adelaide. Um, and I just want to ask the administration that under that, how does the administration read that? Because for me, the way I understand it is two e-scooter operators for a second trial. So we're still trialling. We haven't gone into a formal tender process yet um, and we haven't signed the documents and basically declared that we have a favoured um, uh, a favoured operator yet. So this is all that that does, correct? Uh, so what? That's correct. Okay. 
So there will still be an opportunity that after that three months period, um, there'll be a tender process and we could decide as a council to have many operators in the city. We don't necessarily need to just to be with two, correct? I just need three of them, just to, to, to clarify, the assumption was that we would continue with the current provider, correct. but also then go through an expression of interest for an additional provider. Additional two. Yep. No, additional. no, I see this as additional two. Yep. Oh. Can I just get to bed? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, um, our reading of this is indeed that the current provider would continue immediately. However, they, along with other providers, would be notified um, that we're about to go out to an expression of interest. Any provider could apply for that, including the current provider, if they wanted to continue in the City of Adelaide, would also have to apply. So that and be... that would result in two providers for an additional three months consistent with So this. in total there will be two providers, not three providers? Correct. That's, okay. that's certainly our reading of it. I understand. It. Um, but look, my, my, the one thing I want to um, ask administration to do, I think it's really important that we take into account Australian companies that are trialling this. I know there's a few that are giving it a go. I know they're still in the startup stage where they've got 50 or 60 scooters and they don't have the volume of those companies that potentially have. I think we need to be mindful and cognizant that we need to provide opportunities for Australian companies to also be involved through that process and through a trial. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how that would fit within this. Uh, but I think it's important that we take that into account. But look, for now, um, I'm going to support this. Um, we'll still have an opportunity over the next few months uh, to bring that back to council with all the learnings and go out to attend the process and decide what to do. And potentially, and I, this is my clear position, I want the market completely open where all those operators can come into the city and give it a go and they can compete on price, they can compete on value and compete on, qual on quality and then it's completely up to the market to make a decision on who they favour. Members, Hi. any other discussion? Sorry, Councillor Powell. Yeah, just to uh, add just a few more words to the, to the debate. Um, I am so also uh, uh, supporting continuing on, but so long as uh, the uh, line and that still, uh, they actually adhere to the requirements because it, I mean, uh, there has been concerns around that. And I think that's really the, the most important part. So long as they're complying with the requirements and uh, not necessarily bombarding us with a lot of emails, um, that they're actually performing according to what their agreement was. And then I don't have an issue because at least we are you know, uh, doing things in a measured way. And certainly I support uh, opening up a bit further only because um, uh, going to the other extreme straight away uh, may destroy the actual opportunity because of the, the, the sheer number of, of operators and it's better that we take a more measured uh, approach and it allows us also to adapt and adopt uh, the best practice uh, and still give, give uh, the people that are willing to risk uh, an ability to actually have an income and, and still be able to have hopefully a, a profitable uh, service. Uh, and while we are evaluating it and then really putting it out to see, okay, what does an open, uh, an open opportunity look like or whether we limit to a, a, a number so that uh, it is still a viable option, but it gives sufficient uh, competition so that we are able to get the benefit, but they also have a, a viable you know, business model to run on. And that means we can extend it rather than necessarily uh, throw it to the wolves and you don't know what it turns out like. And I think it's, we do need to be cautious and that's part of our, our obligation. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, just you a question. question. Yeah, sorry, Mayor. Um, uh, may, may I just say that uh, I didn't mind the bombardment. My database is just expanded <laughs> so much. Um, the question, though, uh, to the administration is do I understand correctly that it is the intention of the administration, based on this motion, to seek expressions of interest from parties, including mine, who may or may not be successful in becoming one of the operators. Is that correct? Through the, the administration is saying that's how we're reading it. Um, it's, it's difficult because you can read it a number of ways, but I think we need clarity over that. So from here, that would be the intent. Okay, so there's I, no guarantee. I might go back to the mover of the motion for clarity around the intention. Yes, can I just say quickly, it disturbs me greatly that we're having a discussion about probity, yet there were comments that might suggest that we would just retain the current 
operator as a, as a default position. I think that's very inconsistent from administration. That disturbs me greatly. Certainly, we are the intention of this is to start an EOI process again from scratch. If you're not happy with them, you can get rid of them. But get in two operators that meet your requirements. Okay, we're in your hands. Um, noting the concerns, I personally don't think they're they're too bad. But uh, look, we're in your hands as far as getting two providers in a little bit of market competition um, that can that can meet all your particular safety requirements. Sorry, CEO. Three. Um, well, Mayor, I've just been asked the question: How quickly can we undertake this process? Knowing that the current trial is going to expire, I think on, on Sunday, that means we need to undertake an expression of interest process starting tomorrow morning and concluding on Friday. That's, that's the time frame that we have to deal with. So it becomes very problematic, which is why I come back to the original advice. It is a risky proposition. Um, having said that, it's not impossible to do, and we will take that direction tonight, if that's the, if that's the case. Sorry, point of clarity, that's not what the motion says. I just need to be mindful of that. I don't think because I'm not I'm not supportive of that. So I, can I just get you, CEO, to repeat what you said because that changes my seconding. Um, my understanding is, and please correct me as the mover, uh, by approving a second uh, e-scooter trial to be undertaken three months beginning immediately after the cessation of the current trial, that launches that. Um, are you suggesting, Councillor Hyde, that the expression of interest, interest the new expression of interest starts? tomorrow and it concluded before the three months trial starts. Is that because my understanding is just they're rolling. Yeah, yeah, they're rolling. Yeah. So my understanding is they're my understanding is they're extended whilst then the expression of interest opens. That's that's how I that's what I seconded. But that's not what it um, so I would actually like some clarity because that actually wasn't what Councillor Hyde said. Um, my understanding was also that the uh, incumbent supply would continue as we extend the trial of three months. But please clarify the motion. Um, I'm, I'm proposing that at the cessation of this trial on the 17th of March, as soon as it ends, um, or rather, I'm proposing that you start the EOI now while this trial is going. This trial is a separate stream to what is currently occurring, right? We've got two trials here. You start the EOI process now to ensure that we have a continuity of service so that e-scooters are not pulled from the road um, on the 17th of March. So that on the weekend. Yes, so that so that there is a so that there is a, at least opportunity for continuity of service. Whilst, whilst keeping the current operator extended. No. No, he's not saying that. He's no. saying we finish the trial. I'm saying we conclude this trial as is. We start an EOI uh, tomorrow, knowing that you've gone through the process very quickly before in 48 hours, and we can have a little bit more time for this one, which I think is a benefit. Um, and all the operators are invited to reapply, and you pick two to continue. Now, if you pick Lime, then that's fine, and there is continu continuity of service there. Um, if you don't pick them, then perhaps there will need to be a gap where there isn't necessarily continuity service, but we're in your hands with that. Um, uh, but there is another e-scooter operator there as well, and that adds competition to the market. So. Councillor Kerr, uh, I will go to administration for some clarification. Just a follow-up on the point of order. So does, just a question, does the administration have delegation then to extend the current trial if the EOI process is not completed within two or three days? Like if there's four or five days required to, to make it work, do you have delegation to do that? Yet three, Lord Mayor, yes we do. And I might just clarify that the resolution of council tonight will be something that we will be sure to be um, appropriate within the rollout. We'll need to take advice how we do that, whatever it is. Um, but if there is a problem, I would return back to council um, with clarification of the situation. But you do have delegation to extend. I do. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Kerr first, then Councillor Moran. Lord, Lord Mayor, I'm simply going to propose an amendment to, uh, to include an extension of the trial. Uh, no. But he said he doesn't want that. It's not an extension. Very confusing. Do we want. The has clearly said he doesn't want an extension of line. Why are we. Can Councillor Moran. Councillor Kerr. I, I, I would, well, I, I, I would put to Councillor Moran that the reason we're doing that is because there is. Uh, Councillor Hyde is butting up. Uh, against a uh, quite quite worthy uh, 
uh, concern that there's not enough time for an EOI period. So why don't we just put a second dot point saying that we uh, approve an extension of the trial for a period of three weeks uh, and, and facilitate the EOI that period. I'm, I'm just trying to be constructive here. So if there is support from the chamber, he or if there's, there's no support from, okay, I will, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll withdraw that at the minute and make that <laughs> proposal. I'm just going to ask some clarity through administration for a moment. I think we can answer your questions. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, members, just to repeat uh, that our understanding of, of this was, and I um, fully agree with, we need to be very careful of commentary in an open chamber around issues of probity. So the reading and our understanding of this um, amendment is that there would be continuity of service. So that would mean midnight the 17th, there is a continuity of service. Given there's, well, tomorrow is Wednesday, um, and we have turned um, the previous EOI around in a very, very short period of time, um, I would suggest that um, a longer period of time would give us for a longer trial period a potentially a, um, a more considered response from a greater number of providers. I'm suggesting, and again our reading was, that we would extend under this recommendation the current provider for a short period of time whilst we conduct the EOI which they and anyone else can apply for. That would be two providers for an additional three months, during which time we can um, do some more work around what criteria would be on an ongoing basis and, uh, and explore all of those issues in a, I guess, um, fuller and more detailed manner. We can do that. Um, the reputational risk we've highlighted in the report our CEO has also highlighted that. So, Lord Mayor, that, that's my summary and understanding. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moran, you've already spoken, so you can ask uh, a question. I want a, a question of clarity. Yes. Um, I'm having, uh, I gather the late range of big reasons, I'm having Hassan tell me that the mover is happy with the Lyme trial to go further. And yet I've looked at the mover and he's said three or four times that is not what his motion says and he doesn't want that. Can I ask through you, does the motion give, give you uh, instructions to extend the trial and could you please explain what delegation you have? I'm unaware of any delegation that gives you um, the ability to, um, if the, indeed the, the mover does not anticipate his motion to facilitate uh, a lengthening of the trial, and from his um, frequent head shaking, he doesn't, what delegation are you relying on then to do so? Oh, I'm happy if you have it, but it seems odd. Are you, I while that so I think that was very clear that administration just said they could extend with the current provider while we're doing the expression of interest and then we'll go to the two new providers that come through the expression of interest that period might be a few days or might be an extra week no, and so, so the, the delegation, delegation I would just ask the I'm unaware of any CEO. delegation administration the right the, the ability to you, you over the meaning of the motion through you, Lord Mayor. Back in January 29th, Council met, you delegated the authority to me to develop a temporary permit for up to two e-scooter share program operators to facilitate a trial in the City of Adelaide. Um, so that was delegated to me. Yeah. And um, it says here also, including but not limited to consideration of safety, placement of scooters, monitoring fleet, complaints process for inappropriately located bikes, and number of e-scooters in each program. So I read that to be that I do have the delegated authority. Doesn't that, doesn't that delegate you up to next Sunday though? Uh, the trial was de determined by the administration originally, so we can extend or adjust the trial. That's fine. Thank you. Councillor Martin, did you still have a question? You've already no, no, spoken I wanted to speak. Now. I haven't spoken to the substantive Lord oh, Mayor. I spoke to the amendment that was lost. Um, Lord Mayor, um, 
this is unraveling. Um, this is unraveling into a shambles. Uh, and I can always tell when the journalists at the table are scribbling furiously, this is just turning into something well, that Well, Councillor Martin, I do Councilor think Martin. that we've resolved the questions on the floor now, so I think everybody's quite clear what we're doing moving forward and that the CEO has the delegation to extend the trial while we're going out to no, the I understand that, but uh, Councillor Abbott, I thought, said he believed that there was an extension of Lyme for the period. Uh, Councillor Hyde says not. Um, there is some confusion. I think about... we've got. I think we've got clarity on that now. Well, I, I, I respectfully, Lord Mayor, and, and look, I, I understand there's goodwill here in the, the council. I understand that entirely. All I'm suggesting to you is that there are different expectations of what is going to be achieved in the coming days. It is likely from the adoption of this motion that will be in exactly the same process we were in the first instance. That is a 72 hour expression of interest process or slightly longer, uh, which led to some of the participants uh, becoming very annoyed about it and, and reflecting on our reputation. Um, uh, I will be voting against this on the basis, uh, not that I have any disregard for Councillor Hyde or what he's proposing, but just that the administration's recommendation provides some clarity. It says simply that the trial that we agreed would cease on the 17th of March, will cease on the 17th of March. There will be a period of four weeks during which time a second process will be determined, including the setting of criteria. It is, it is cleaner, easier, and I think probably going to be the uh, most reputational enhancing thing that we can do tonight. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Council. Look, I, I had uh, intended Council to. Sims first. Oh, sorry, I, I had intended to support this motion, but I'm persuaded by. Um, sorry, what... Councillor Sims, you moved the amendment, so you've already spoken. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor Kerr has also spoken. <laughs> no, 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 it's a good question. No, not the substantive. <laughs> okay. Me. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I feel compelled to uh, to perhaps uh, just add an element of stepping back. Looking at the bigger picture here, um, so I live in the southeast corner, and my business is in the is in the CBD Central Ward. Um, I, 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 really, I, I do take on board some of the concerns Councillor Moran has articulated, and I think they're real and they must be addressed. Um, but I am compelled to support this motion overall because living in the city, I spend most of my time in the city. I have seen the take up of these scooters and I've got to say it is an absolutely magnificent sight uh, to see the sheer number of people, the number of young people who have been taking these scooters and obviously deriving value and worth from it. It, it, it is an absolute joy, it's a, it's a joy to the heart uh, to see human flourishing, to see human flourishing in this way and it comes from it comes from a council doing its job, and that is being cautious and prudent, but recognising, uh, but recognising uh, the when something comes along that is an innovation that people want to use. It is decentralised. Uh, it is cheap, decentralised transport that is absolutely wonderful. I think that we have, we ought to be strong. There are going to be uh, reports. There'll be there'll be uh, vested interest and there'll be genuine interest uh, uh, coming to us and saying there are injuries. Well, there will always be injuries, no matter what sort of transport you use. There are always reckless people. There are reckless people on cars, on bikes, or or just walking in the street. We've got to be strong. Um, and I've got. To, I must actually say, I do think that in councillors. Um, Councillor Kerris. I, I, I do think that this, uh, this, the e-scooters uh, may well be a signal the um, signal separated bikeway is being redundant. Uh, yeah, that's right, redundant because uh, <coughs> separated bikeways are relevant, uh, are relevant uh, during during peak hour. And now, what what has come about? Uh, what has come about is an option for those people who wish to travel during peak hour, but do wish to commute, but do not want to take a bus and do not want to drive. There is an option now, uh, which is uh, which which unlike bicycles is uh, is stable, is is footpath friendly, and is speed limited, Lord Mayor. So there are there are an enormous amount of benefits to this. I think we ought to do whatever we can. I think let's let's allow the extension of the trial. Let's allow other operators to come in. But if you walk through the city and you see the number of young people using the scooters, we, we cannot just suddenly say to them, no, we are, we, you know, we're, we're, we're going to stop this from happening. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Anybody else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Albert, you stay. Lord Mayor, if I can, I'd like to uh, move an amendment. Okay. <laughs> 
time. Would I add the following two points? Um, extend the existing trial permit for Lyon to operate in the city for up to four weeks while we undertake an EOI. Uh, I'll just get you to uh, slow down. Yes. Just one moment. Uh, and to four weeks while we undertake an EOI or up to two operators for a six month <coughs> permit with an option to extend based on performance. Can I also add another point to that? So uh, uh, include updated permit conditions and requirements in the EOI that respond to the issues raised in the trial. Um, also, what, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave those two points and if I can, delete everything else in that motion. Could I just ask you to read through to make sure that that's correct? So we've got extend the existing trial permit to limit to Lyme in the city for up to four weeks while we undertake an expression of interest for up to two operators for a six month permit with an option to extend based on performance. And the second point, include updated permit conditions and requirements in the EOI that respond to the issues raised in the trial. And if we can uh, delete all the other points. Um, I will look for a seconder. Councillor, Councillor Ho. So, Councillor, would you like to speak to the? I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Thank okay. you, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Actually, I'd like to speak though. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure how many councillors here in this room actually have tried the tried the East Water. All about all any of the senior I mean, people have you use it. Right. Firstly, you need to download the app and you need to put in, put, I mean, actually put money in it before you can actually scan and unlock the e-scooter. I'm putting $100 in it and now it's still got $79 left. If we get rid of the e-scooter this Friday, there's no way I can claim my money back. Where am I going to blame? And, <laughs> <laughs> all right. and many of the customers are not aware that the e-scooters the e are still on trial. Right, so either the admin has not given enough warning or Lime has not given enough warning. So I, I like to support this, this amendment and uh, just because customers like me need to have some kind of warning. Right, thank you. You're going to have to do a lot of rides between now and four weeks' time if that gets up. Would anybody else like to speak to the amendment? Councillor Kouros. I'm so glad to hear that uh, the e-scooters have warmed Councillor Kira's heart because me too, I have been happy to see everyone using them around the city and I will be more than happy to see them up, taking them, the scooters down to the north and south of the city. Um, it just brings a lot of smile to people's faces and, I've been, and I think it's great to continue using, having the e-scooters in our city. I support this amendment. I think it gives everything a bit of, bit of time to streamline the concerns of the other councillors. Um, um, and um, I, I believe that it will be great for our city. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Look, I'm happy to support this amendment as well, and I, I want to thank uh, Councillor Abrahimzadeh for um, helping us navigate our way through the storm here tonight. Um, it's very confused, um, but this is a, a really good uh, way forward, and um, I, uh, I thank him for this and uh, I'm delighted to see that Councillor Kira has uh, embraced something as passionately as he has the car park. <laughs> Councillors, would anybody else like to speak to the amendment? If not, I'll go back to Councillor. Oh, sorry. Don't you mind me? 
Look, I think this outcome, and this is option two in the recommendation of administration, um, and what it does is it provides the extension for a four week period. It launches a new UI process, which is pretty much what Councillor um, Hyde has requested before uh, for a six month uh, trial or permit, uh, which could be extended based on performance. So this still delivers on an extension to the current providers so as continuity of service. This also provides an EOI process that will open up for two operators or a maximum of two operators uh, to have a six month trial or a six month permit. And also gives the administration the opportunity to look at updated permit conditions around some of the learnings you've already picked up in the last few weeks and to implement them as part of that permit discussion. I think there will also be an opportunity in that time if there's any changes required to any of this position that that could be brought back through a council decision to this chamber as the feedback arises. Look, obviously this is um, a disruptive motion, which is part of part of the, it's, it's, you've got to embrace it, Councillor Sims. We live, in a disrupt, we live in a disruptive world. So this is disruptive technology and sometimes you've got to, you've got to do these things. So look, this, is, this I think is a good outcome, still delivers on what Councillor Hyde was after. Um, and yep, yeah, I'll ask uh, council members to support it. I, uh, I do think it's uh, lovely to see so many avid fans of the scooters. I'll go back to Councillor Abraham's in the summer. Thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'll be quick. I want to thank uh, Councillor Sims for his kind words. Um, I hope that uh, this, uh, this amendment uh, uh, does uh, satisfy uh, Councillor Hyde's original uh, uh, motion. I also want to uh, I commend Councillor Kira for uh, for inspiring me to, uh, to to come up with this uh, this moment. Every time I hear Councillor Kira speak, it, uh, uh, it it speaks to my heart as well. So uh, it's good to see council members with some enthusiasm and energy in this chamber. And uh, I urge all members for the support. Well done, Councillor Thank you, members. We will now take this to vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That is carried. Um, I will. That becomes a substantive. I'll now go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Oh, sorry. Is, did, was there any other speakers before I go back to Councillor Hyde? No, Councillor Hyde. Okay. Well, where to begin? Um, I'm reminded of a quote uh, from a, I think it was a mid 18th century legal philosopher. He said, "Lawmaking is like sausage making," um, which Councillor Noel um, might attest to. You know. The outcome at the end of the process is good, but you don't necessarily want to see it happening. Um, uh, and that may be what happened here tonight, but look, ultimately, ultimately, the big thing for me was about continuity of service. Um, uh, certainly, I did want to see this undertaken as quickly as possible to see more providers um, taken in uh, into the market. Um, look, if I can just make um, uh, some observations, uh, I think, on the previous motion. Certainly, I think we're, we're in the position we're in because that original trial really didn't go for long enough. And, and then we had a very hard end day. And so we sort of dug ourselves very deep into this hole um, that we've sort of dug ourselves into a little bit deeper now, but we'll see how we go. Um, uh, I, I didn't take option two because I do think four weeks is a little bit too long. I was conscious administration um, were very firm and, and told all the operators that they would not be extending the trial. And I wanted to preserve the administrations um, uh, uh, reputation, I suppose, but also their reasoning for that, which I, which I think was fair. They were banging down the door. Um, and also, I, I, I still do think uh, three months is more appropriate because six months is a very, very long time. Um, uh, and that does further limit us investigating bringing other providers in. Um, so, so I really encourage administration to come back to us um, if they do believe that there is room, um, uh, as, particularly as the market evolves, because, um, and I would hope that they would still uh, work with DIPTI to think about extending the boundaries, which goes to uh, part of what Councillor Moran said, when you've got other councils popping up with different providers, um, which wouldn't actually happen because it's actually DIPTI that does the regulating and they're currently only within the CBD at the moment. But, um, uh, so I do think as the market matures, um, you will see demand for there to be potentially more than one provider, which is why my original motion was quite measured and had two. Um, uh, but uh, look, at the end of the day, continuity of service was the big thing um, uh, for me and making sure we don't take, uh, I suppose, a step backwards um, in, a, in a mobility sense for our ratepayers and our visitors. So thank you. Thank you. Members, uh, if I could have a show of hands. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Um, that now takes us to questions on items 9.1, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor.
Can administration please provide an update on the status of the citywide speed limit review project and speed limits in the parklands and squares? Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, I'll get the reply. The citywide speed limit review is underway. All speed counts have been undertaken for the North Adelaide area and CBD counts will be completed by the 31st of March 2019. We will then undertake analysis of the counts which will inform the committee workshop in June 2019. This includes the squares and the parklands roads. The key objectives of the project include review existing, review existing speed limits in the City of Adelaide area, including parklands, roads and squares, review consistency and continuity of speed limits in the City of Adelaide area, understand the actual speeds experienced in the City and North Adelaide compared to the signed speed limits, understand the variance of speeds throughout the day, AM peak, PM peak, off peak at night time, as well as throughout the seven day week period, Compare the speed data with crash statistics and pedestrian, cyclist, bus, tram and traffic volumes to assess speed limit appropriateness from a safety perspective. Review the impact of recent infrastructure projects on vehicle speeds and how different city streets environments impact on driver speeds. Undertake a literature review of what other Australian capital cities and suburban centres are doing with their speed limits, mixed use environments and residential streets. A committee workshop is currently scheduled for the 18th of June 2019. The workshop will discuss key findings and observations from the review and seek feedback on speed limits in the City of Adelaide. The question, Councillor. Uh, we have a second question on notices. Councillor Knoll. Um, do you wish me to read out the entire question or just... Uh, you can uh, ask uh, members to take it as read. Take it as read. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Um, this relates to the uh, Credit Union Christmas pageant. Uh, the City of Adelaide was a sponsor for three years for the Credit Union Christmas pageant. The 2018 event was last covered by this arrangement. Uh, the Adelaide Christmas pageant traditionally held on the second Saturday in November, unless that day falls on Remembrance Day. The pageant is then held on the third Saturday in November. Moving the pageant to Sunday has been considered previously by the pageant owners, the South Australian Tourism Commission. Two issues have been identified. A massive increase in costs to run on a Sunday, given the nature of labour and penalty rates and a concern on return on investment. And two, a uh, conflict with Sunday being a day of worship for many is seen as insensitive and could negatively impact attendance and reputation. The administration has reviewed the 2014-2018 Christmas in the City strategy and now working on a 2020-2025 strategy that will inform various areas of the motion. The Christmas in the City operating project funded in 2018 with 600000 for the delivery of new, uh, new decorations, lighting displays, events and marketing and grants to the precinct groups. In addition, the City of Adelaide provided sponsorship funding of 82500 82 for the 2018 Christmas pageant organisation via our annual grants and sponsorship program. I hope that answers your question, Councillor Pernod. Uh, that takes us to item 10. Do we have any questions without notice members? No? Uh, we will go on to motions on notice. Uh, item 11.1, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, I, do you want me to ask for a second? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, um, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Um, look, this has been uh, deferred from a previous occasion. Um, uh, the matter came to me through uh, a ratepayer who alerted me to uh, the significant but largely unknown history of the, uh, the town hall bells. Um, now, this much is known about them. Uh, the bells were always part of the design of this building and uniquely um, the, the tower at town hall was built around the bells, which is very, very unusual. And we've determined in recent months that the capital cost for those bills actually came through a fund uh, that was um, subscribed to by the citizens of Adelaide. So the town hall bills were actually built with funds raised from citizens. Um, we found minutes from the committee that organised the funding campaign. Uh, uh, they are in the city archive in Weymouth Street, although 
They have never been put together. There are unrelated documents, or sorry, related documents, which have not been uh, uncovered, but which are thought to be in the archive. Um, but we do know that the bells commemorate uh, the death of Prince Albert, who was, of course, the, uh, uh, the husband of Queen Victoria. He died just a few years earlier than that. Probably listening to a council debate, sorry. Um, uh, we, we also discovered in the past few months that the bells were commissioned at the same time that the uh, the bells at Westminster were uh, commissioned and by uh, the same maker. Now, nobody knows how they got there uh, in the tower. They obviously came by ship. There are photographs, apparently, of the bells being loaded on a ship on the other side of the world and photographs of them being delivered by bullet train to the town hall, but we don't know where they, they are. And so this motion is designed to help to put together that history, as well as a social history, because um, it, it turns out that the, uh, the bells were very important in the social life of this city. They were in the newspaper at the time, I don't know whether it was the advertiser, but the newspaper at the time recorded uh, the joy of the citizens, and people actually wrote poetry about the bells, and some of it's been tracked down. So this motion is about pulling all of that uh, together, or the possibility of pulling all of that together, and ask the administration to have a look at how we might do that, whether it's feasible, and what it might cost, if it does cost anything. Um, so on that basis, on the basis that it's consideration of the possibility of a report that would find that we could look into it, um, I would ask members to support it. Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. I reserve my right. Thank you. Would any other members like to speak on the bells? The bells. <laughs> no? Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? Love you, <laughs> Members, uh, I ask for a show of hand. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, we next have um, item 11.2, Councillor Martin, progress of motion. Yes, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Th uh, this was deferred also. Um, I, I was just saying to Councillor Sims, I I'm on a roll. I, know, a I think I should sit down now. Members, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Sims, thank you. <laughs> One word and we're going to use Councillor Sims, thank you. Um, I reserve my right. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Sims? I, I reserve my right. Members? I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, I do ask members to support this. Summed up. If I could ask <laughs> members to vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Yeah. Takes us to item 11.3, Councillor Martin. I, I uh, speak with some hesitation, Lord Mayor. I, I fear the role may end. Um, but look, uh, this is. Uh, I'll just look for a second to Councillor Martin. Sorry? I think I saw. Sorry, I was looking at Councillor Sims. I'm happy for Councillor No, no, I don't want to. This one I don't hate. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, can, can I say in proposing this motion, I am not asking uh, the elected body to approve any funds whatsoever, but I am asking that this be included for discussion as a matter of importance in the 19-20 budget considerations that Council is going through at the moment. Um, it stems from a meeting in North Adelaide uh, hosted by our own economic uh, development team and to which businesses throughout North Adelaide, uh, including the Precinct Association and significant investors uh, in North Adelaide, like John Colshaw, were invited. Um, in fact, uh, the event was opened by the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Kouros and uh, uh, Councillor uh, Abraham Zada were there. At the meeting, there were many eloquent speeches uh, from businesses about uh, what the main streets of North Adelaide, O'Connell Street and Melbourne Street need. And there is no doubt that O'Connell Street needs enhancement. We've had that discussion many times in this chamber. Um, and as I've pointed out before, it is in our strategic plan. 
Um, but what business people said at that uh, meeting they wanted was a framework for this enhancement to occur. They uh, are very keen to see uh, a master plan as we move along the path to the development of 88 O'Connor. And indeed, that should be one of the contexts for this discussion. Uh, deciding on the environment, the public realm that will fit that development at 88 O'Connor Street. Um, which may be underway as the uh, administration, certainly the Director of Services hopes, in the next two weeks, if not sooner. Um, but certainly during the 1920 financial year. Um, moreover, it is part of our obligation to the state government, uh, as was uh, well publicised at the time. It was, in return for the government investment, part of our obligation to look after improvements to the public realm as part of that uh, development of 88 O'Connell and the $10 million the government uh, made uh, available. So you can see uh, what I'm proposing uh, does have some context. Uh, and uh, I've included Melbourne Street as well, uh, not least because local businesses were saying to us at the, uh, the event in North Adelaide hosted by the economic development team that Melbourne Street is in many ways in more need of repair than O'Connell Street. And uh, as the administration uh, suggested to me during my conversation with them, uh, including Melbourne Street in this uh, proposal uh, would bring about synergies and perhaps cost efficiencies because they are closely related and there may well be some commonality. So I emphasize again, this is about putting the matter into the 1920 budget for consideration and approval by the elected body as part of that process. Uh, and I would appreciate your support, even though I know that I've gone way over the top in terms of my uh, outcomes tonight. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Councillor uh, Sims, then Councillor Hyde. I'll reserve my right. Reserve your right, Councillor Hyde. Uh, I'd like to move an amendment, please, Lord Mayor. Um, I would just move uh, that we uh, make point three. Um, don't highlight all of them, you don't need to get rid of all of them. Um, uh, point three, the development of a master plan for the Hutt Street Business Precinct. Councillor Moran. Second it, thank you. Um, and I'd also like to move, uh, going back to the top, request the administration consider in the council's draft 1920 budget the following initiatives. So are you asking to change the word uh, include yes, to consider? Include to consider. Thank you, I think that's. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that in a moment, but I think it will be a good outcome for all. Uh, for North Adelaide uh, and the city, or just for the city of Adelaide. Okay, very quickly, um, uh, I had a motion on, on the Hunt Street Master Plan draft and ready to go, but I thought given uh, what we had on the nose paper tonight, I might leave it to uh, next meeting. Um, but seeing as we're dealing with this, um, I, uh, I commend Councillor Martin for bringing these uh, to the chamber. These are very important initiatives. Um, <clears throat> as I think I've said uh, previously in here, our main streets do need a little bit more tender love and care. Um, uh, I understand that was pretty much the consensus amongst everyone um, in this room in the uh, in the election campaign. Um, certainly, I live on Hutt Street. Uh, that was part of my platform. Uh, we do need some proper planning done um, because we haven't really thought about any of these precincts which were really in their heyday sort of 10, 15, 20 years ago uh, and have been let slip by the wayside. Um, just a tad. So, um, as well, if I can just speak to the uh, uh, changing of include to consider, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, especially with what I hope we'll get up with the uh, uh, splash 2.0 motion, um, what we what we will have the opportunity to do there, what administration will have the opportunity to do, is start activating these precincts right now, right away from the get go. Um, and I'd be really interested to see how that unfolds over the coming. Uh, weeks and months, um, and that may well uh, feed into a master planning process as we see these new and interesting ideas come into these uh, into these precincts. We might want to um, think about the master planning a little bit later this year instead, um, uh, and kick it off that taking what we've learned from Splash 2.0 and feeding that into the process as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, 
I'm oh, sorry, if you just pop your microphone on, Councillor. Well, I did, sorry about that. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lord Mayor, I just want to say my, my first council act the first council action that I brought um, uh, after the election um, was immediate focus on North Adelaide to open up ADA O'Connell Car Park and to activate ADA OC um, until the EIO process was uh, complete. The reason why I've done this so long, Lord Mayor, as a first order of business is because the more I door the more I realise that the community want action and they want action now. They made me realise the urgency of the situation. Master plans are great and there is a place for them, but the time now is to immediate, immediate action our streets. We really need to bring people to our streets. This is why I think the Splash 2.0 project that I'm proposing that Councillor Hyde had mentioned, um, that it will bring an activation and bring action to our streets now. My promise in the election was to deliver a master planning process to Melbourne Street, but and the splash, splash, and the splash program was uh, in, wanted to be put in place for that to activate that. So also in the context of Adelaide Connell Street development, in regards to its development, um, it's, it's important that we work out firstly what that would look like for Adelaide Connell Street as well. So I would like to see, um, you know, how the uh, the the master planning will go in combination with ADA O'Connell when we begin developing it. So I think master planning is important, but I also think the Splash Project project 2.0 that I'm bringing in is important and the combination of them two together will be great. So that's why I support this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers to the amendment? Councillor Martin? Yeah, just uh, briefly. Look, I, I'm happy with uh, the, uh, the amendment, although um, rather than asking the administration to consider uh, the draft budget, it, it, it would be better if it said include full consideration, meaning the council, not the administration. But I, I can live with that. But I just do want to make the point, I, I support the initiative uh, of Splash in North Adelaide and any part of the city, but I want to make clear that a master plan is something entirely different to an activation. It is the plan by which the, uh, the public realm uh, is treated. And so there is a, a standard uh, design, and from that, every decision of council feeds into it. So it's not so much about um, bringing people to the area, but creating the environment in which those things can happen. And, and it determines, for example, the, uh, the style of um, uh, street furniture, the style of the footpath, the style of the road, whether or not there's a traffic island, whether there are trees. It is about establishing a standard um, uh, to which the council can then subscribe in future capital works programs. Uh, that's, that's the beauty of a master plan. It enables that coordinated approach so that we as a body are always asking ourselves, does this fit with our intention for this street? So activity and master planning, great, let's have them together. But this is really important as a standalone uh, initiative. Thank you. Um, councillors, any other speakers? Councillor Kerr. Last question, Lord Mayor, uh, to administration, to the CEO, I guess. Um, which of the streets in Central Ward would benefit uh, from having a master plan, in your opinion, which of the streets do you think are going to miss out? Uh, should be bother at this stage. Was that a rhetoric question, no, Councillor? No, no, Run the wall. Bill, it's not really. I'm not really able to answer that question tonight. I think we can take it on another. So unless Beth, you have any thoughts? No, um, it's not able to be answered. I'm sorry. Um, so, members, if there's no further, I'll go back to the move to summer. No? Councillor Martin? Oh, actually. Sorry, Councillor Hyde. Summed up. Thank you. We'll now vote on the amendment. If Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. That now becomes a substantive. Is there any further discussion, members? Not. I'll go back to the move. Councillor Martin? Summed up, members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. All right, that takes us to item 11.4, Councillor Abrahamson. Lord Mayor, did you need me to read out the, uh, the motion? No, you can take it as read, but I do need a seconder. Councillor Ho, thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, 
since the um, Royal Adelaide Hospital moved from the East End to the West End a few years ago, um, businesses in the city, especially those businesses in the East End, have been doing it tough. Um, I know that it will take some time um, for the former Royal Adelaide site uh, to be built up um, to a point where we can replicate the same sort of numbers uh, of people that worked and visited uh, at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Um, I assume those numbers would probably be in the thousands, maybe four or five or six thousand. Uh, but as you can imagine, there are a lot of uh, a lot of people. There were there were a lot of people uh, in the East End. Um, I believe that this initiative um, will help the CBD traders, especially those uh, in the East End. Uh, I believe that it will increase foot traffic, and this foot traffic leads to uh, increased uh, trade. Um, we all just came out of an election when uh, we were speaking with uh, uh, residents, businesses, all ratepayers, uh, and uh, when we were speaking with uh, with traders, um, um, there was uh, there was one thing that was constantly pointed out to me, <coughs> to me, and that was the lack of on street car parking. When we even talk to visitors that visit uh, the CBD, uh, that's the number one thing that they do point out. And I'm not sure whether if anyone here watched uh, Channel 9 or Channel 10 uh, yesterday on the news, uh, when they were interviewing visitors, um, the number one reason that uh, they hesitated to come into the city was because of uh, uh, free parking, lack of on-street parking, and then the list uh, goes on. Um, Lord Mayor, I, uh, um, by putting this motion through, I'm trying to encourage people living outside of the CBD uh, to visit uh, our, uh, our lovely city, knowing that uh, there will be extra on-street car parking uh, to accommodate them on their weekend trips. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? I was on my right. Thank you, Councillors. Councillor Donovan and then Councillor Sims. Uh, just a question to start off with for administration. Do we have any data on the current car parking that is there. I know the smart meters are not yet yielding data, but do we know whether that car parking is currently at capacity along Rundle, obviously not the uh, along Rundle Road on both sides, that at capacity, under capacity? So, see you. Sorry, Lord Mayor. I don't think we've got that to hand, but Claire, you might be able to give us some, some thoughts. Um, through the presiding member, I'm aware that the um, parking on uh, Rundell Street is underutilised at the moment. So once we have smart parking in though, we will um, certainly use that data um, and use that to inform what the future parking needs might be. Okay, so given it's underutilised at the moment and we know that this is going to be at some cost, and the administration comment had, you know, 120 to $250,000 based on previous uh, various solutions. And this is to investigate alternates. So I, I completely accept it could be less than that. I'm not particularly for or against um, Rundle Road closure and certainly hearing the, uh, the feedback from East End traders, it's important to show that we're listening and that we understand uh, some of these, these areas. However, I think as a council, we have decided we will be an evidence-based council. We will make decisions based on all available evidence. Given the available evidence suggests that if there is no need for additional car parking, I accept that there's a perceptual need by traders and that's important to consider. <coughs> However, I'm suggesting that potentially <coughs> instead of incurring this additional cost when we the data that we have at present says that we are under utilizing car parking so that there is an abundance of car parking in that area that we potentially defer something like this until we can back that up even further by the smart uh, parking meters um, and i suggest that that rather than moving an amendment that potentially we defer this until we have further data given the current data we have shows that there's no need for us to do this. Councillor Sims. Sorry, Councillor Sims. Yes, I um, agree with Councillor Donovan and, and I would encourage uh, Councillor Abrahimzada to uh, consider a variance to his motion where this uh, gets deferred to give us the opportunity to uh, get the data that Councillor Donovan has talked about. Um, you know, I read uh, administration's comments with interest. I was concerned about the 
um, a significant price tag associated with going down this path, given we have done this before. Um, and if there isn't a pressing need to do it, I, I just wonder whether the juice is really worth the squeeze at this time. I think let's get data um, and, uh, and then have another look at it uh, down the, the track before we go down this road. Uh, Councillor Kerr and then Councillor Hunt. <laughs> That's right, let me add it. Um, I'll begin with a question of administration of uh, perhaps Claire. Um, uh, I, I just want a clarification on this uh, suggestion that current, presently, uh, presently uh, parking is underutilised. Is it, did you actually say that on-street parking uh, is underutilised and there's a, surf a surplus of those spaces on, on Rundle Street? Thank you. Through the uh, Lord Mayor, that wasn't quite what I said. Um, after the O'Brien extension went in, um, there were additional on-street parking um, spaces created in that precinct. Um, we've had anecdotal feedback um, from users in that area um, that the price of the parking is putting people off from parking in those locations. What we are doing through Smart Parking is collecting that data. Um, we also have anecdotal feedback that Sturt Street is currently paid parking and again another area where um, there's an underutilised of that parking. So what we were um, hoping to do through our smart parking projects, collect that data and start to um, have a look at um, the relationship between price and availability. Thank you. Um, look, I'm in favour of this motion. Um, I think that we ought to recognise that a significant part of this uh, is about messaging. Uh, it's about messaging. Um, the Mad March and the influx of people, of visitors to the East End is about to come to an end. But we know what has happened to the overall picture at the East End. There's been a decline year on year on revenue, on traffic, on, on, on business. Uh, this, this is absolutely manifest. Worse still, the backdrop to this is across the, the entire city. There has been an absolute decline, not even in real terms, but in absolute terms in the number of vehicles which are entering our city. In a city, uh, in, in a state which talks about, which is supposed to be growing along with the rest of the country, um, it ought to be of extreme concern to all of us that the numbers of vehicles coming into the city are actually declining in absolute terms, let alone in real terms. This is actually an important measure. This is about messaging. If we are concerned about people coming in and using U parks, well, the answer to fill the U parks is to give the message to the public we're open for business. They will come and you fill the U parks when they sense, when they feel that we have done our best to allow on street parking. And we will not give them that feeling if we do not actually make active steps to say to them, we are trying to increase on street parking. That is what people expect of us. And I made the link last time, a bit clumsily, but I'll make it again. If you want to help city based unemployment, if you want to help city based unemployment, you tell people who have got jobs, who have got cars, to come to the city and spend their money. That's the way to help city-based unemployment law. So I think this should go ahead. Councillor Ho. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think just has covered most of what I would like to say, just like to add on something uh, by starting to ask Claire the first question. How long will it take for um, how long will it take for us to install those smart meters and get those data? Um, through the Lord Mayor, those um, uh, smart um, meters. meters are already in the ground and so other relays were pretty close to launching smart parking. We've been collecting data for a couple of months now. So by the end of the day, like when do we, when will we receive the report and get back to the council? Thank you. Um, through the presiding member, um, I'd have a, um, I have a sense that we can probably start to bring reports through if you're interested in um, what our sensors are already telling us. Um, my preference would be to actually launch smart parking and start to bring um, data through once we start to see how people are actually interacting with the software and interacting with the um, parking spaces so I can give you a richer picture of the on-street parking utilisation rate. Okay, cool. Right, that's all I know. Thank you. Members? 
Uh, Councillor Hyde. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, I noticed you mentioned bus services go down there. Which bus services still go down there? Does anyone know? Perhaps it's to the CEO. I don't. I think um, Beth, do you have some, anyone here that can answer that? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, my understanding is no, they don't. They don't. Oh, okay, because I saw that. I saw that mentioned in the comment. I thought once the other one was done, that they might not anymore. Um, uh, does administration feel that they have um, the ability to, once we get the data, if it shows that there is no real uptick in, in usage and there are a lot of vacant parks and this is basically just a waste of time, uh, do they feel, does administration feel that they have the ability to bring this back either through the chamber or through committee um, and say, we just need to think about this again? CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Part of the response provided talks about um, needing to be included in the coming budget process and also it will prepare a one-page scope. Ideally, these sorts of recommend or resolutions of council should call for a report prior to a decision being made so that we can provide full information for you to make informed decisions. This is a very direct recommendation. It actually requires reinstatement, etc. So it is a very definitive resolution that you're considering at the moment. My encouragement would be that a report is provided first, but I'll take the direction of council. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I um, speak in favour of this uh, for a few reasons. I um, have spent nine years in the East End as a trader, and I um, had the opportunity, actually, as a matter of fact, to see this working in a full scale um, because it stopped, I think, around 2008 or 2009. Um, uh, it was around that time. So basically what's been proposed here is a weekend closure of Rondel Road to provide parking opportunities for people to park easily there at an affordable rate to traverse the East End and to go through Rondel Mall and enjoy the city. It's an open air car park. It's very easy. It's very accessible. And it's something that council has done in the past. And if you read the report, and look, with every bit of fairness, um, CEO, um, the report that's come through shows very clearly that admin has no intent and no interest in delivering this uh, because we're still talking about water bollards when the world has moved on. And we're still talking about cost to pop up bollards from the ground when the world has moved on. There are many ways at which we could use greening infrastructure and leave it parked on the side of Rundle Road and bring it in as required on the weekend to close that part of the street and to provide for parking. Very easy to be done. It shouldn't be too hard, it shouldn't be too complex. Uh, I know that it might require some time on the weekend for people to do the work, I could appreciate that. But that also potentially needs to be attached to a bigger piece. I think the next stage after this, and I don't know if any of you have been to the East End throughout the fringe period, the on-street cl street closure last year and this year has been extremely successful. And the East End traders are still talking about that today, where they actually want to take ownership over that. They want to actually close the street, work through with council on select times in summer periods where they can be a festival in Rundle Street that's outside the French period because they want to be self-motivated and they as businesses want to be able to contribute to deliver on more people to the precinct. So they want to provide the entertainment, they want to provide outdoor dining opportunities and have that street potentially closed. This will complement that proposal too. This is exactly what we'll do. And look, if any of you think that parking is not an issue in the city, it is an issue in the city and it's not just an issue of uh, sometimes, as you, as Councillor uh, Dalby mentioned before, it could be a perception, but perception is a big, big issue that we need to combat. And if this comes at a cost that's managed with Council, that we can deliver it, then we should. So look, I've asked Councillors to support this, um, and I look forward to seeing how this would fit in within our budget consideration as well. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Any other speakers, members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Avery and Senator to Summer. Lord Mayor, um, a number of items came up in the discussion and also uh, the commentary that was provided by administration, I haven't really addressed any of those. So uh, what I'll do is very quickly address uh, a couple of them if I can. Um, now, uh, we were given a cost, uh, an estimate cost for uh, setting up these bollards. Now, I know that, um, uh, as the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, did mention, that, uh, you know, uh, the water barriers, um, uh, all those sort of uh, concrete barriers, um, uh, I guess that they are all technology, whether if we can um, explore uh, some other forms of barriers 
uh, you know, greening infrastructure. I don't know whether that's going to uh, be enough to uh, uh, possibly entice councillor Sims. Maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, but also going back to what uh, councillor Sims uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you know, about uh, having a um, uh, uh, having our revenue from uh, our car parks uh, uh, diminished. Well, this is something that uh, will hopefully uh, uh, address that. Um, now, if, if we don't do anything here uh, in the city, I'm just afraid that the visitors that we speak to, the traders that we speak to, and everyone that we have that come into the city to spend their money, will decide to spend their money in the local shopping centres. Um, yes, there might be an increase of uh, an, um, an increase in number of car parks, but there has also been an increase in population. I'm a, I'm a prime example of that. I was in the western suburb and I came to live in the city of Adelaide and I brought my little hybrid with me. Well, if that gives you another point, Councillor Simpson, it gives you something to think about. Um, we also had an increase in businesses. Uh, the number of uh, um, uh, the staff, uh, business owners and operators, uh, they bring their own cars into the city. So we do need to think about uh, a number of things here. Um, um, bollard, we need to be innovative and creative about those things, whether it fits an in-ground bollard that we can use for other events. Uh, that's purely a suggestion and uh, I'm no bollard um, uh, expert and I'll, I'll be more than happy to leave that to, uh, uh, to the experts and to admin. Um, it has been done before. We have seen it uh, 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 successful before. Um, so all I'm saying is let's learn from uh, our past experiences. Uh, and let's do it better. Um, because discussing installing bollards and uh, thinking about different types of bollards and being creative and innovative in that space uh, might seem like an easy thing, but as we found out tonight, it is not. It can be a complex thing. We're discussing it here tonight because it's the right thing for our ratepayers, for our businesses, and for the city economy. Thank you, Councillor. And if I could now to have a vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. We now have item 11.5, Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Board Mayor. Um, at the outset, thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, at the outset, uh, I would just say <coughs> that I believe that we, uh, as, as a capital city, have an obligation to lead the way um, in some areas uh, in some ways when it comes to policy um, and I do think uh, as, a, as a city that has a relatively healthy balance sheet um, noting that we need, do need to keep an eye on it um, we do have an obligation uh, to to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to leading the way um, and it's in the spirit of that uh, and and also sticking up for uh, my residents and ratepayers that I, I moved this motion um, tonight um, I think everyone in the chamber has read uh, the IGH uh, report, which I think was very considered, um, and outlined some very viable uh, ways forward and, and, and some very good ways that we can continue to support, as, um, as it was said uh, earlier, the backbone work of the Don Nelson Foundation. Um, obviously, the city uh, does, and it always has had, and I guess to agree, it will continue to have issues um, where uh, the lives um, of ordinary ratepayers and residents intersect um, uh, with the lives of those who are less advantaged um, uh, than us and, and are experiencing their own um, issues and social problems and of course the, uh, the number and the quality of the job that the social providers in the city uh, do um, uh, attracts a lot of people to the city and um, my residents, my residents in South Ward um, are, are very, very aware of this um, uh, and so it is something that I think uh, puts into perspective our work, not only for the greater good but for them as well. Um, th that greater good I think speaks for us. So um, 123 rough sleepers in the city at the moment, 28 in crisis accommodation, 108 housed so far thanks to the Adelaide Zero project. Um, uh, and of course, uh, when we're thinking about cost, um, $13,000 cheaper per person to, have, to take care of someone. Um, in this way, uh, uh, to have them housed rather and properly taken care of, and then it is to sort of clean up the mess afterwards. So that's what this motion is about. Um, uh, obviously, it is contingent on state government funding, um, and uh, obviously, point two notes that we can't tackle this problem our own on our own. Um, uh, we simply don't have a checkbook that is big enough, um, and so I'd like to make that point to the team as well that we're not going out. Um, sort of as a lone ranger on this one. Uh, we need the state government to come to the table 
Um, uh, and uh, I would hope administration um, would work with the Don Dunstan Foundation in any way to progress those discussions um, uh, with, the, with the state government um, and with Minister Lensing. So uh, I commend the motion to the Chamber. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Thank you, members. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment. That is uh, that um, point three be amended to remove the phrase contingent on state government funding the remaining requirement to the end of report. And with a new uh, point four added, calls on the state government to fund the remaining requirements to implement other recommendations in, uh, of the IGH report. You have to repeat that, Councillor Sims. So, uh, calls on the state government to fund the remaining requirement to implement other recommendations of the IGH report. And then take out the phrase in, in point three. So it should just read for point three. Budgets of further contribution of two hundred thousand dollars in the two thousand and nineteen to twenty twenty budget consideration process. Get you to check that that is correct. Calls on the state government to fund the remaining requirement to implement other recommendations of the IGH report. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a second? Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I do actually want to commend um, Councillor Hyde for putting this forward. Um, I've spoken, uh, spoken previously in this council chamber about um, the importance of this issue and the role that council has to play in uh, offering some leadership here. Um, but I think we could go a step further, um, and that is put the money on the table now um, and then continue to lobby the state government to take action. And that's what I'm proposing we do. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Okay. Members? Councillor Moran? Can I speak to this one as well as take up my second speak for the original Yes, because you're speaking to the amendment. Thank you. Uh, yes, look, I, I see this as very similar to um, Councillor Hyde's, really. Um, it is just a different way of doing it. And I, I'm, per, as a seconder of Councillor Hyde's, I'm perfectly happy with this, and I'm perfectly happy with this one. Uh, so um, this just puts a little bit more punch. We put it on the table. It doesn't mean that we're annexing money off. If the government doesn't come up with it, then we can re, re decide to do something with 200. But I think the government will come up with. Um, with the money, so I don't think there's any danger that we're um, uh, playing brinksmanship with them. So I'm happy to support this one as well because I don't think there's a material difference. Homelessness um, and the collapse of our mental health system is at the root of this, and I think it's very important that we house um, our, house our mentally ill people. I grew up in a South Australia. Uh, they had the same number of mental health issues as do now. They had the same number of drug issues, perhaps different drugs. Um, and I grew up in a, South Australia, um, as did my parents, where there were no people sleeping rough on the streets. Uh, we had two large mental health institutions, Hillcrest and Glenside, uh, and they housed itinerant people, um, all, the whole gamut of social um, distress in their, um, in their large, spacious garden grounds. Um, Hillcrest was sent, sold off for housing some time ago. Uh, now Glenside is being made into a film studio and upmarket apartments. The uh, idea was then to send the um, decentralised and send the mentally ill people out of the community, which everybody at the time thought it's not a bad idea. You know, institutions have a bad name. Um, let's do that. But what we didn't realise, there were no decentralised stations. And that's why now poor Hutt Street's in such a dire state. They operated, Hutt Street and Byron Place operated as satellites to a large, very state-of-the-art mental health situation. When they disappeared, the little dots, the little islands of church help were the only things that stayed there. Um, and as Alex knows really well, we need to start building up our mental health institutions again with hubs. Homelessness is a symptom, as is poverty in many places, of mental illness. 
of a range of mental illnesses. You treat the mental illness and look after them, those people, you will not find many homeless. There are not too many well-adjusted people that decide to live in their filth on O'Connell Street or lying down half naked in um, King William Street. We're not looking after those people. Many people thought that when um, council complained about um, a lot of misbehaviour in Hutt Street, they were actually anti-homeless and only worried about the residents and the look of the street. This is wrong. It's decent human beings. Of our heart goes out to the people that aren't being looked after on the street. Now, it's great, great that we're addressing homelessness, um, but if we address mental health issues and look after those people, we won't have homelessness. I, I've seen it. I've seen and lived till I was 30, 40. The only time we ever saw homeless people was when we went to Europe, if we were lucky enough to go there, and came back with, oh my God, there are people living on the streets. We didn't see it. You young people are used to it. It is not normal. It's not hard to fix. Just needs money. Thank you. Councillors? Well, look, just very briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I thank uh, Councillor Hyde for the uh, the motion, uh, and I thank uh, uh, Councillor Sims for the amendment. I, I agree with Councillor Moran. I don't think there's much difference. This uh, simply says that we will provide the money regardless of what the state government will do, and I suspect that the state government will come up with the money. I'm happy to do that, not least because it does show, as I'm sure Councillor Hyde intends, that we are setting an example we're putting up, and I think this is uh, a worthwhile thing for us to be doing, and at the same time, uh, demonstrating compassion. Thank you. If there's no further speakers, I'll go back to Council Sims to sum up. Yes, look, it's not my uh, intention to undermine um, what Councillor Hyde is doing here. Rather, it's to uh, really strengthen um, the motion by demonstrating a financial commitment, irrespective of what the state government does. Of course, I'm hopeful that the state government will come to the table too, but I thought this was a good opportunity with our budget process for, it, for us to put some money on the table now. Thank you, members. If I can ask for a vote on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. We then go back to Councillor Hyde. So, Council, is there any further debate on the original motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, just to make the point, um, uh, I will be pushing as hard as possible to get this funding. Um, uh, and I do think it's important that we fund the whole of the report as a package and not just components thereof because um, I think that's that's good policy. So when we go out, we go out strong, we do the whole thing in partnership with the state government. Um, and I'd prefer to work with them than sort of try and back them into a corner because we're a lot smaller than they are. And if and if we're, if we're in front of them and they're in the corner, um, that's not a position I particularly want to be in. So thank you. Commend the motion. Members, if I ask for a vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thanks, members. Um, members, I... Noting the time, I am thinking of calling just a quick five, ten minute recess for, um, or would you like to keep going? Um, okay, let's say five minute break and then we'll come back.
0.7, Councillor Kerrer has withdrawn. That's correct, I wish to withdraw. Correct, thank you, Councillor Kerrer. Uh, that takes us to item 11.8, Councillor Kouros. Oh. We will come back to that. I'm going to go to item 11.9, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll move the uh, motion as printed and I'll seek a seconder. Members, do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Look, I, I'm speaking with regards to the motion of U-Park ticket validation, where I've asked the Council to investigate an automated system for U-Parks to allow city businesses to validate customer U-Park tickets. Um, look, this really, um, I think, um, will provide an opportunity for business to utilise council assets uh, to maximise exposure and to attract customers back to their business if parking is really an issue. So I think the opportunity there is very simple. Every business in the city will have the opportunity to put it on social media, to advertise and to tell all their customers if they will come in, spend $100 with them or have a lunch for two or dinner for two, or if they will buy a garment or have an appointment at a hairdresser or an appointment at a dentist or whatever it is, that that specific business has the opportunity to be able to redeem their UPAC ticket or validate their UPAC ticket as part of that cost. Now the business can make that decision, so it's not something that falls back on council and it shouldn't have a budgetary impact on council because what I'm asking for there is an opportunity for the business to be able to pay a wholesale rate uh, through that mechanism, through an account, where they, they, they can on-bill that to customers or they can choose to waive that fee for customers as part of the transaction. So I'm hoping that through the, digital, the digitization of the UPARC we've already undergone, that's the thrum of our system processes that we've centralised within council, that we'll be able to do this pretty easily. We have seen this happen already in um, some shopping centres around South Australia. Uh, but what we've also done uh, is we've seen this, for example, as a perfect example with the central market. Um, from the numbers that I'm seeing, there's approximately about half a million visitations a year using that first hour. But guess what? We don't know if they're buying one product from the central market. So in essence, we're sacrificing a significant amount of income to be able to bring people in, but we don't know if that customer is connecting with the product. What this will do is we'll literally connect the customer with the product and it will give the council the opportunity to measure via KPI, where did these people come from? What postcode? Do they come to the city often? Et cetera, et cetera. All that data will be useful for us to be able to combat any perception around parking because we're going to start having some actual data that we could rely on. But what's most importantly is for every person that spoke on the weekend with regards to some of those motions on, on, on the news and on social media, parking will no longer become a problem for business. It will become something that they can provide as an ad value, as an ad service. And I think we could easily deliver this with everything we know about the internet uh, and about our 10 gig network and the systemization and everything we've delivered through with council. This will this should be pretty easy to roll out and do. And I would also estimate that what would happen is on the back of this is every business in the city will be pushing for those customers to use our UPAC business, which will also potentially generate revenue for council, revenue that we can invest back on the city and city infrastructure to better the city and make it a more attractive place. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Hyde, you're reserving your right. <laughs> Councillor Stevens, and then Councillor Hill. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment. That is uh, that uh, Council investigates an automated system for U Parks to allow city businesses to validate customer U Park tickets and then remove the full stop and add and a system for reimbursing customer tickets for public transport. So, Councillor Moran will second that. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I do want to commend uh, Councillor Abiad for um, putting this forward. Um, I certainly understand his intention in terms of trying to attract more people into the city, um, and I think that's a worthy goal. But I am concerned that we're just rewarding one particular mode of transport. Of course, we have our city um, is serviced by a tram network, a train network, a bus network. Um, and uh, what a wonderful thing it would be for us to also reward patrons of city businesses who use public transport to get into town. I do worry about this council's approach of continuing to 
uh, reward the, the motor vehicle and, and recognise the primacy of the motor vehicle when there are other modes of transport. Um, and uh, we should be encouraging them equally to come into the city. Um, and uh, so my amendment doesn't detract from what Councillor Abiad is trying to do. It really just uh, promotes alternative modes of transport and uh, rewards all customers equally. Those who travel by public transport, um, their dollar is just as good as those who are travelling into the city by car. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, I, I agree with um, Councillor Sims. I don't think this does distract and one, we are um, validating tickets in our own private car parks. We're not suggesting that we, they can validate it in any other car park. So it is a business attractor for us. Also a, um, a boon for businesses if they so wanted to take that up and maybe an attractor to the city. But first and foremost, as um, the previous council and the previous council before that, I am seen as quite pro-car, but um, I also understand the, the need to um, become more Melbourne-like and encourage people to use public transport. And I think it's seen as rather um, self-serving in a way if we don't then spread it to uh, encouraging people to take public transport. The state government does that, previous state government, this state government. And I think it's a very good message to send that, okay, we want to make a bit of profit and make, get a bit of stuff going here and attract people to our car parks, but also encourage people to come into the city with their car. But first and foremost, the message of this city and the message of this Lord Mayor has been very much to encourage public transport. And I think to do this without that addendum um, is uh, off message. And I really don't think it hurt, hurts Councillor Abiad's motion at all. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Obviously, we're not, we'll be not supporting this, and I want to state the reason to why. We own U Park assets. I think sometimes Senator Sims, sorry, Councillor Sims, forgets whether he's in council or in federal Canberra uh, or in a state government proposition. This is, we don't own the public transport network. So, a system to reimburse customers for tickets is not something that this council can do or investigate. And if we're going to ask the state government to investigate it, and if they want to come on board, they will offer it to Westfields and other shopping centres because they're a state government, they need to look after everyone. We want to look after the city. The city is having to compete with the suburbs, having to compete with the Westfields of the world, and we want to bring people back. And we are using the assets, the U parks, that the ratepayers have bought and operated for the city of Adelaide to deliver that outcome for them. This is a complete different proposition than anything else. We might as well redeem the um, line tickets that people are going to be using as well. We might as well do that. We might as well pay for the helmets of people that are coming into the city on their bikes. We might as well subsidise the petrol vouchers for people that are using petrol to get into our city. When do you want to stop? I think there's a time and place where we have power. We need to understand the power that we have as a council and the power and the lever of control we've got is through the assets we have and that is the U Park. We don't own buses. I wish we did. But that's all we've got, and this is what we delivered. Members, Councillor Donovan and then Councillor Martin. I think the initial motion by the Deputy Lord Mayor is great. Um, very clever way of both utilising our assets and also providing um, a service and a perceived service, both of those things, to, uh, to users of the CBD. The thing that Councillor Sims' amendment adds to it is that it does start to address one of our very significant pieces of work, which is carbon neutral Adelaide. And if we are truly committed to reducing the 40% of carbon emissions that occur through public, uh, sorry, through transport, then part of that is, is attempting to also um, provide support for other forms of transport. And there would be reasonably easy ways of providing that reimbursement. It wouldn't be as direct as the UPAR, um, but that can occur without it being a reimbursement directly, that can still uh, take place. So I, I do support this amendment simply because it speaks to our other strategic goals. And I think the first idea is, is great and we can build on it by also ensuring that we have that equity and that we actually follow through on our other um, City of Adelaide strategic goals, which, which have been endorsed 
by the Deputy Lord Mayor, by our Lord Mayor and the previous council, um, and and we need to actually put some uh, put some actions behind that and ensure that when we do look at these uh, these new actions, we continue to support those larger pieces of strategic work that have already been undertaken by the council and by council administration. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin. Oh, look, uh, uh, just briefly to say, um, I thank uh, Councillor Abiat, the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, for the motion. I agree entirely with it. I think it's a great thing to be able to uh, to track where your customers are coming from. And if I read the motion correctly, it doesn't rule out the possibility of some kind of business participation in payment <laughs> um, as a, uh, a means of encouraging people to the city. I think that's a great idea. Uh, I. Uh, I heard the groans when uh, Councillor Sims uh, raised the subject of public transport. There's that, oh God, the green stuff again. Um, but quite frankly, uh, quite separate from any consideration that Councillor Sims or Councillor Donovan raised, I actually think it's a reasonable thing to encourage people to go and shop and whether they come in by public transport or car, what we want is more people in the city. We want them coming here any way they possibly can. And if there is ultimately through the administration's investigation, a proposal to uh, subsidize new parks through business, then why not through public transport? Um, I've got to tell you, uh, were it not for the fact that uh, she has a very well used seniors card, my mother would be into this in a flash. It's a means of getting into the city where she might otherwise go. And everybody needs to understand for many people in the community, the public transport fee for travelling to Westfield is no greater than travelling to the city. However, if there's a free ride to the city or a compensation for parking, then that's just yet another tool to encourage people to visit us. So I don't see it as, as a, a counterproductive proposal. I see them as complementary. Uh, and I do acknowledge this is a great proposal. I see um, merit in the, uh, the addition of some sort of compensation for use of public transport. Members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, Sims, Councillor Knoll. Um, I personally won't be supporting the, the, uh, the amendment. I think, uh, quite simply, if we look at the, the economic argument about what we're trying to achieve, and first and foremost, it is about uh, business and, and, and negating that, that car parking issue, uh, and it is very specific. And that's that's the major complaint people have. It's not about the mode of transport coming in and out of the city. It is about uh, when they choose to use a vehicle that the, the city is a less attractive option than taking it, uh, say, to any of the other shopping centres or the other other uh, venues of whatever description. I think the main issue we have here is that we one, this is something we can afford to uh, work with and we can we can control. It does also benefit for the U parks because obviously it does drive people towards it and we have as we've heard enough times are decreasing uh, visitations to the city and that's the entire city and but also the U parks is, is, is enmeshed in that as well um, by again looking at the, the, uh, the public transport system I mean it starts to become quite unwieldy and we also we then as a council uh, because there's obviously coming under the same administration as what we are doing for our own car parks which is a benefit for the city, we're now going to uh, also use some of our funds and our administration to actually support the state government with their public transport. And I think, uh, where does this end? Um, so by, by utilising the, 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 you know, the, the simpler the original motion, uh, one, council benefits, uh, through the U-Parks, etc. We're in control of, of, the, uh, of the administration and everything on like that as well. Uh, we can work closely together and we can nuance then how we do our, our, uh, you know, our validations and, and uh, support for business as well as for U-Park. And it, we are sending a message uh, uh, and it's one that we can uh, jointly uh, make it so that it's affordable for the, the business person, but also that uh, we as, as a council requiring uh, our own income streams will get some benefit out of it and uh, you know increase the amount of visitations to our, our new parks. So I think we just need to be careful because it, it's uh, what's, how we deliver this. And I think this will create something much more unwieldy and far more expensive. And um, you know the public transport is already 80% supported by the public of South Australia, whether you, you ride it or not. Um, you know, and they do say it's $150 for every bus trip 
irrespective of somebody sits in it or not. Um, I think that we can have conversations with the state government about how we bring people in, etc. Uh, but I think let us first do this, uh, you know, the original uh, motion, and then we can always develop it uh, as the state government sees its its role more closely aligned with our council. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Not for now. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I have to say I'm a bit perplexed by the uh, resistance to this amendment. I'm not trying to take away from what uh, Councillor Abiad is doing. I understand it is irritating when people move amendments. Um, we've all been there. But um, I'm trying to uh, add value to uh, what Councillor Abiad has proposed here. Um, this doesn't have to be an either-or either uh, proposition. It's actually a way of recognising that whether you come into the city by car, uh, by car or uh, by public transport, we want you here. We're um, open to business. And I think it is actually an important approach to public policy that we should take in this council, that when we're looking at transport options, we don't just look at the car, we also look at public transport, cycling and a range of alternatives. And this is a way of trying to integrate that in. You know, further to Councillor Donovan's point before about uh, carbon neutral Adelaide, the reality is if we continue to focus exclusively on the car, as the only form of transport that's worthy of recognition by this council, we're going to really undermine our strategic focus on reducing carbon. And as I said earlier, a typical vehicle emits 4.6 tonnes of carbon dioxide each year. Why wouldn't we, as a simple alternative, encourage people to also take a tram, take the Omar, take a bus, take the train as a way of getting into the city? Particularly, might I say, that's a really worthy uh, consideration when people are dining out at a restaurant and may not want to uh, drive home. Um, so I'd encourage councillors to look past the, um, the messenger, consider the message, um, because I think most people in the community would say this is a worthy amendment and something we should really look at, irrespective of whether it's being proposed by a former Green Senator or indeed a former Liberal Party candidate. Whoever's putting it forward, it's a very good thing to consider and uh, I encourage you to do so. Thank you. Um, I don't belong to any party, just for the record. Um, thank you, members. If I could now put that to the vote. Those for the amendment? Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. And we go back to the original motion. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Donovan. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank um, Councillor Canole for sending around earlier this week a Deloitte Access Economics paper, which specifically outlined a number of points that would help to build our city. And one of those points being uh, that we should be focusing on public transport and cycling infrastructure. So I'm, uh, I'm somewhat baffled after Councillor Canole sent this around, specifically through sharing that evidence-based document with all of us, that we would then look at an opportunity like this and choose to not go forward on that. So I still endorse absolutely Councillor Abiyad's initial proposal. I think it's a fantastic way that we can start to balance out some of the um, uh, competing demands both of our currently underutilised U Park, coupled with perception, public perception, and it's disappointing that the other amendment did not go through, particularly given the recent data based document that Councillor Canole kindly shared with us. Thank you. There's no other speakers, I'll go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to say, oh, sorry, Councillor Canole. Um, I think uh, speaking specifically to this motion as against certainly uh, the, the Deloitte paper and the, this is a stepping stone first because of one, it's a, it's a financial consideration and this is about you know, the council's ability to, uh, to take part and also the expenses around that. So it's not about the greater picture of what we're going to do with the, the overall uh, transport needs of the city and, and the state. Um, and that's the first, uh, first point to this, this conversation. Um, and I think uh, the other, we need to have a completely different uh, um, you know, view on how we're going to deal with that. So uh, bringing people to the city in the first instance, and you do that by, uh, by uh, negating their, their excuses for not coming here. And bring, don't forget, bringing people to town 
uh, is going to save on, on greenhouse gas emissions, etc. Why? Because by centralising people's uh, uh, actions and views and, and they're, uh, how they're going to live their lives, you're decreasing the amount they're expecting them to drive. What we're doing by, by uh, not enabling them, by giving them encouragement to come and use the city, we're telling them to go further afield and drive greater distances to achieve their, their you know, what they wish to do in their, in their daily life. Therefore, they're going to be using more, more petrol and therefore contributing greater. And every time we make ourselves an island uh, where we try to uh, uh, sort of uh, avoid having you know, vehicles come in and all the rest of it, we're actually having the opposite effect. So if we just first get the people's attention and desire to be in the city, then we can then convert them to uh, and give them the infrastructure for all the other forms of transport. And I'm all for all the extra public transports, et cetera, and, and that. And those things are certainly part of the theory, but first, be the, be the destination, then let's then make the make the, the transition to other forms of public transport and, and you know personal bikes and scooters, whatever uh, the option. I think it's just a, a stepping stone for all of those things. Thank you. to talk about wanting to do it, to find funding from the state government, and for us to talk about multi-mode multi -mode transport uh, discussions, and for us to look at the Smart Move 2.0 strategy for the city that includes future mobility. Tonight we spoke about mobility through scooters. Tonight we spoke about cars. We are going to be speaking about community bus. We're going to be talking about all those things at the council. We're talking about master planning, which is about creating a better environment for pedestrians. This council considers all modes of transport already, and I'm not gonna accept from anyone pointing the finger in this direction that we do not consider that. We have done that, we have endorsed that, we'll continue to endorse that. What this, this is about, which is something I'll never understand, businesses currently in the city can, if they choose, to pay for public transport tickets for commuters. They can do that, any business can do that right now, we don't need to interfere. I don't see the need for government to interfere at every step of the way in people's lives. We'd like to stay away from that and we'd like to assist people to flourish and do all the things that they need to do on their own. What this does is it gives us power through our assets to control a good outcome for the community and to deliver on good revenue for council to be able to invest more into bikeways, into pedestrianisation, into cars and you know what, soon enough Soon enough, very soon, we're not going to be talking about carbon emissions when it comes to vehicles. We're going to have smart cars that are going to be getting in, dropping people off, plugging into a U-Park to recharge, autonomous vehicles running on batteries. What are we going to hear Councillor Sims talk about when that happens? I'll be interested. Do we clear out our ways now? Do we block our roads for cars right now? The future is coming and it's coming quick. Let's not do what the state government did and remove all the tram infrastructures a couple of decades ago. All the tram infrastructure because the car is coming, the car as we know it will change and the emissions will change and this city will remain and our businesses will remain if we support them. Thank you members. Uh, no time to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is passed. Um, Councillor Kouros, I'm going to go back to 11.8, uh, which is your motion on notice for splash over. I'm a bit worried uh, that my councillor Sims might amend this one as well. Um, oh, it is. Um, look, I don't want to take away. I just, I just um, need a second, Councillor. Oh, sorry. So, Councillor Hyde, thank you. Okay. Don't want to take away um, the master planning process. I, I understand that. Uh, the two can work together, but I think uh, master planning um, presents a vision for the future. But uh, the Splash 2.0 is going to be a short term and most effective solution we can have as part of our budget, 2019-2020 budget. It will reinvigorate our main streets now. Um, just imagine, imagine for a moment how under delegation our administration will be able to transport those precincts into attractive and vibrant destinations for our ratepayers and city visitors. This will have an instant result for our city economy and for those ratepayers. 
This is a, a proven method already as we've seen the success of the SPLASH project in the 2010 term. I believe such a program will deliver our laneway culture, small bar licensing and rebrand our city to a must-visit destination. It will pave the way to be able to know how we will master plan the future for our, for our main streets. I just uh, want to reiterate also that you know it, it is a fast track process. It, it, it will, it's a fast track process for growth and I really do believe that it is an, an excellent initiative that was used in the past with Council and we should implement it further in our budget. Thank you Councillor. Councillor Hyde? Yes, I'd just like to commend uh, Councillor Kouros for bringing this motion to the Chamber. Um, uh, my understanding of the original Splash project was that it was a, a roaring success and it was very popular um, uh, for people operating in the city as well uh, as visitors, of course. Um, so in, in making the point that um, uh, we need this activation and in my precinct in, in North Adelaide, we need this activation. Now, um, I would just like to also commend uh, council administration for administering it last time, whoever that may be and whoever led that charge then. Um, uh, and I commend this motion to the Chamber. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just briefly, because I think um, the Lord Mayor herself was involved in that project at the time, the Splash. Um, and look, uh, I believe Splash program was a catalyst for laneways. When we're talking about laneway activation and laneway closure, I think it led to the discussion of the state government around small bar licences because it created that vibrancy. It took some elected members may not like this, but it took charge out of the chamber into the ground where the CEO had delegation to go onto the street and try new things. So people were quite pleasantly surprised with some of the things that were tried. But also the response rate, uh, the response rate from the organisation was quite incredible because what happened, if there was an issue or a complaint from the star, or from, the, uh, from our community, the administration also responded instantaneously. They've dealt with the issues, they've rectified it, they've moved on, and they kept sort of moving on and doing by trying. And this is something that sometimes we don't do enough of in this council. So look, I think this is going to be an exciting opportunity because I think this will also underwrite the success of the master planning process because it will provide for a change on Main Street around businesses, consumer habits, and some of the new customers that we may attract. And I, I believe this will feed into the master planning process as a result. So. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Kuros, for bringing this to the chat. Members, so I just remind you of the two rules of Splash. That was nobody got, <laughs> we started with nobody got killed and then we amended it to nobody get hurt and we could undo anything within 24 hours. And uh, it was a unique way to test and trial policy. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing another iteration of it. Um, Councillor Kuros, would you like to sum up? Yes, I just want to say that um, thank you, Lord Mayor, for um, bringing, for being part of this uh, initiative because it is something that I'm very passionate about as well because I am listening to the people of North Adelaide and this is where I particularly want to bring it to because they want action and they want action now, Lord Mayor. So this is an excellent program. I hope our councillors support this because it will start implementing programs exactly how um, Deputy Lord Mayor has said um, to the main streets and we can start trialling what would work for our main streets and for Hart Street as well and I really do hope I get support. Thank you. Members, to the vote, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to uh, item 11.10, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Look, I'll be brief. I don't know if we can. I'm happy if Councillor Sims wants to vary this to increase the tree canopy. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just thank you, second of Councillor Hunt. Uh, before the seconding, though, if you don't mind, Lord Mayor, if you don't accept the seconding, I'm just going to ask a question of, um, uh, of administration around point of order. Um, the information we've received around the tree canopy is not consistent with the 11 and the 9 percent. Does the motion need to be varied? Uh, before it's seconded, or uh, through the CEO. Yeah, thanks, Beth. I think it's close, but not there. Yeah, um, through you, Lord Mayor. I'd suggest to be consistent with the um, ADM yep. chapter, Green City, that that it would be amended to reflect that. Yes. Yep. Would you like to give us that amendment? Um, I, I don't have the numbers open right here in front of me, but I can. If I could get the administration to assist, that would be great. Tell me. 
Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, the, the numbers are in point one. So. so notes the canopy of southwest and northwest of the south of the city as point one in the administrative report. So southwest is 18.79%. Southwest, yep. And northwest, 9.21. So it's very, very close for that. Okay. Well, look, I'll seek a second of that regard, Lord Mayor, for that variation. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, look, I'm not going to speak for too long about this. This is something that the um, uh, Grove Street Precinct Group and also the Weaver um, in the West Residential Group of the Central Ward have been asking for for quite some time. Uh, this is not about waiting for infrastructure projects to roll out. Whatever we can go out there and put a tree on a footpath or put a tree on a street, even if it's between cars, we should just get it done. Um, so I'm trying. To, I'm asking administration through this process uh, that we also look at um, state government support that could potentially be in play, where it's a dollar for dollar or tree for tree or anything that we could do with the state government to be able to expand that. I know they've got a vision around that, uh, which would be great. Um, and I'd ask members to support it. So I just want to sort of leave it here. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? I present my right. Thank you, members. Councillor Sims. Don't worry, Lord Mayor, I'm not amending it. Um, I, actually did, I, I actually did want to uh, just briefly commend um, the Deputy Lord Mayor for putting this forward. Um, members may recall back in my first uh, term on the Council, I put forward um, the uh, work that led to the Greener Streets um, program, which you know administration has done a fantastic uh, job on. It's been really exciting to see more and more trees planted in the CBD over the last few years. Um, and uh, I'm really delighted that uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor has put this forward and um, I encourage members to get behind it. Councillor Martin. Um, look, uh, I don't uh, wish to speak against this. I think it's a, a, a noble and worthwhile uh, proposal. But isn't it correct that motions on notice can't be amended, that the motion had to be put and then amend it to incorporate that. I, I would hate to see this go through and then it be declared I'm false. To amend it, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that seriously. Lord Mayor. Is, is that the case? The editorial amendment is fine in in the nature of the motion on notice. If the deputy Lord Mayor was seeking to move a motion on notice that was different in its intent and was adding or deleting activities that are not present before you, then yes, it, it would be inappropriate. Okay. Members, if not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, I think this will offset a lot of the parking stuff that we're dealing with carbon wise. We're going to have more green on one side and parking on the other. So I ask members to support this. Thank you, members. To vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, we now go to 11.11, .11, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is to do with um, ongoing measures to cut red tape and cost of doing business in the City of Adelaide, and um, I seek a seconder. So hard. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm just putting up my notes. Uh, look, again, uh, very self-explanatory. Um, this is something I've been passionate about for a while, took to the election. We tried it at the last council as well. Uh, and there's an opportunity there for us to support those businesses. I really do, as a previous hospitality business owner, uh, I can tell you right now that those guys do it tough. Um, they do it really tough. Uh, but what that business is, and what's so special about it specifically, is it really provides that vibrancy for the city that we all uh, really are very proud of. An outdoor dining, uh, sorry, a hospitality business with an outdoor dining facility at the moment pays more rent for that specific site than any other business in the city uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, the space that they're using outside. As a result of that, because the rents are higher because of the opportunity of outdoor dining, those businesses pay a higher outgoings in their rates to the council. So what I'm asking for is not an incentive here back to businesses, but in essence just giving them back giving them back what they already pay. Uh, those businesses, we don't have any waste management or collection for them specifically. Uh, those outdoor dining facilities themselves are the licensed, so anyone can sit there. It can't be for exclusive use for business. So in essence, they're paying to activate public realm where anyone can sit in it, and they're paying a significant cost. Some businesses are paying smaller amounts, 
of three, four hundred dollars a year, but some are paying up and close to about five thousand dollars a year. That's on top of encroachment fees, on top of waste management fees, and everything else that those businesses have got to cover. Uh, the other aspect of the motion as well talks about streamlining some of our processes within council. So if businesses are requiring A-frames, they're requiring permits around application for development, a whole heap of things to consider, then it's a one-set permit, one-set form, very simple, just tick the boxes and move on. So there isn't a lot of things that the business have to do. And if we can automate the process, make it, make it digital online or make it a form online, that would also be a very good outcome. Uh, and lastly, uh, we should look at waste management services for those businesses, especially around green waste and food waste as well. Because if you look at um, what those businesses do and generate, uh, there might be also a potential opportunity there for council to talk about waste management services at a reduced cost, which also can provide a business opportunity for revenue for council, where we could recycle better, control better outcomes and manage all those distribution networks around waste services in the city where it all consolidates and it becomes under the city of Adelaide banner. And I know we can't cover everything, but there might be some services there that we could do. And lastly, a trades parking permit. It cost an approximate 30% more for a trade income to the city. They charge that to our city businesses because it is just not convenient for them to park and to do the work. Currently, they've got to call up and sort of get a get it some type of a permit through council but there isn't quite anything clear for some of those businesses on how that could be achieved so it may be that it's an application online or maybe that we educate the businesses on how that could be done uh, because again there's a great opportunity there to save businesses money. thank you councillor hein councillor moran uh, yes uh, <clears throat> i would like, uh, I'd like to move take some parts because i do have a problem with the second part um, we did bring that in last year, that we waived the um, outdoor dining fees for complying um, restaurants, outdoor dining, uh, supported that fully. The report came back, as I remember, that it, it did, wasn't the lever that we thought it was, that, that it wasn't um, making people go from complying, uh, non compliant to complying, uh, as we thought it would, and that was the, what we were, we were aiming to do. <clears throat> I think Councillor Abbey at the time wanted to waive all dining fees and I think the other side was, like, let's just do it. And I think I was strong in that, do we do it, keep it for non-complying, waive it for complying to see if we'd shift the moment. Didn't work. I uh, don't know why. Um, now, what we're left with now is a lever that didn't work, so why would we bring it back again? Um, the businesses that have non-complying furniture tend to be the poorer businesses. I remember um, Councillor Kerr saying that about uh, making the businesses that have um, that uh, can't, you know, if you make them too green and insist on too high standard, you're actually punishing. And I'm not saying all businesses, um, Councillor Kerr, because you are the expert in business, but I have been going around the city for a long time, North Adelaide, where I am very familiar. Um, and it does tend to be the businesses that are running on a narrower margin because that's what they say to me. I cannot afford to pull the fixed tables out because I can't afford it. And now not only can I not afford to replace it as I would love with compliant furniture, I would do that if I could afford it. I can't afford it. And now you're slugging me with the full toad odds outdoor dining. So you're punishing me for the fact I can't afford it. The chains like Chibos, who can afford it if they wanted to, but probably aren't so fussed about um, outdoor dining fees anyway, um, do afford it. So if it's not acting as a lever and it is punishing and making it harder for the struggling business, then why are we doing it? So I would like to some parts because I thought this was a terrific idea. I voted for it. Now I have uh, changed my mind and I agree with uh, Councillor Abiad's original stance that we should be waiving all outdoor dining fees. That is a much more, um, uh, a better thing to do to help all businesses. I was against that last time because I thought it didn't reward the person who then went and upgraded his outdoor furniture, but it didn't make any difference. In fact, more people upgraded to complying when we didn't have that lever. So in that case, I will not vote for that second part because I think it's unfair to the small struggling businesses. Um, and I will in the future introduce a motion that asks for all outdoor dining fees to be scrapped. Thank you.
Deputy Lord, Lord Mayor, are you happy to take that in part? Yes, Sorry, sorry. Can I answer that? I won't do it tonight because I think I don't like motions without notice and changing motions on notice makes it a motion without notice and I think the staff, the administration have, should have the opportunity. It's not, there's not a rush uh, to write a report. So I will lodge that for the next meeting. Thank you. Members. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, I, I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Moran. I also was in that camp that insisted uh, against Councillor Abbott's judgment that complying should be in there. And clearly the results showed that it should not have been in there. I think Councillor Abbott was right. Um, to include the word complying excludes businesses um, that have, for example, as I understand, fixed furniture, fixed tables. Um, and in O'Connell Street, there are lots of them. And in fact, uh, on my way into council today, I deliberately uh, uh, went along um, uh, Rundle Street just to check. And, and um, the list is quite extraordinary, actually. If we agree to this, then there will be no outdoor dining fees in uh, the stretch of Rundle Street I examined uh, from um, uh, the end of Rundle Street down to Pulteney Street, Krispy Kreme and Subway will um, get a rebate. Uh, Krispy Kreme and Subway. Um, those who will miss out are the hotels, the Elephant, the Exeter, the Austral. The restaurants that will miss out are the Eros House, the Schnitt House, Cafe Pieto, uh, Beleza Echibo, Spices, Meat Kong, San Giorgio, Amalfi, Brunelli, and the list goes on and on. So, if we agree to that second motion, then there are literally dozens of businesses in the East End, in North Adelaide, in Gurdjie Street. In fact, I can think of two or three, uh, uh, Councillor Ho, of uh, businesses off the top of my head who will be excluded from this incentive at a time when, as Councillor Abbott says, they're doing it tough. Now, I suspect that he's proposed complying uh, because he was concerned that we might um, uh, oppose it otherwise. I won't oppose it. I think uh, the word complying removed from that will enable a far more equitable treatment of uh, <coughs> hospitality business uh, and will ensure that uh, our ratepayers, and I have two or three in mind, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, won't drive me nuts saying, look, you discriminated against me. And they are, in many cases, as Councillor Moran says, businesses that don't have the capacity to comply. They do not have the capacity to rip out a dozen tables that were installed in 1990 when we said that's okay, you can do that as a matter of policy. They don't have the, the capacity to remove them now in order to enjoy the benefit that uh, accrues to Subway, Krispy Kreme and others. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Kouros? Look, I, I, I don't agree in the sense that it will affect all businesses, but, but in taking on board and, and knowing that I'm an advocate for all businesses, can I make an amendment? Can I take out complying for all businesses? Oh, hang on, I flagged a motion on notice. Well, I took on board the debate. I took no, 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 that's, that's, that's not the board. I moved a motion on notice. Well, we might as well just get it moving now. And if that's what it, we're saying, that really that unfair. Unfair. I've just asked governors and they said it's a valid amendment. Oh, that's a really dirty trick, Mary. Well, that's I took on board what, what we're saying. And if we want to do it, if compliance is what, what Councillor Martin said regarding his list, and really it's going to affect a lot of businesses. Is there a second for that? Thank you, Councillor Abbott. You may speak to it, Councillor Cross. Well, I, I, like I said, I just took on board the debate. Um, I feel that you know, if this is should be given to all businesses, and I am an advocate for all businesses, and I don't want anyone to be affected by it, taking on board the debate tonight, I would like that change to all businesses. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Abbey. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Look, I just want to explain the intent. Um, there's a document that sits outside this room that's called the Outdoor Dining Policy of Council. Okay? That policy you can change at any given time because different councils have approved different things for hospitality businesses over the years. Some have approved fixed furniture. So although you see fixed furniture now out on the full path, 
It doesn't mean it's not legal or wasn't legally approved by council. It just became non-compliant at a later stage when council's intention around outdoor dining has changed. That's literally what it means. So people also that have installed, and I'm sure there are people that are operating outdoor dining um, uh, uh, facilities in the city that are not com not complying and they're not legal. And I'm sure there's you know policing matters that we've got to look there, uh, no doubt. But the intention of the motion was never to make the non-complying compliant. That's never been the case. My intention has always been to cut costs for business. This is not a measure of a carrot to make, as Councillor Moran said before, that's never been my intention ever. My intention is to cut costs for business, not to force people to become complying as a result of a measure by council. And that's the administrative report that came throughout the last council meeting that talked about, well, not a lot of people became non-complying, became complying as a result of this measure. That's never been the intent. And at the time that this was brought back by councillors to the chamber, I was unfortunately overseas and I couldn't speak uh, in against it because the council brought it back in and that budget line came in. I want to make it very clear. I don't want any business in the city of Adelaide that operates a hospitality type business with outdoor dining to ever pay outdoor dining fees in the city of Adelaide. That is my position, not just part of this budget, for every budget because this is an added cost and a burden for business that they don't deserve to be, uh, they don't deserve to be born with. So look, taking this to all business is, is fine by me. That still talks to the intent of that. I have no problems from that. And from what I'm hearing from councillors tonight, they're all happy to support it. So I'm gonna stop here and ask members to support that motion. Thank you. Well, members, Councillor Marshall. Um, yes, uh, thank, thank you, um, and thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Kouros, for the amendment. So I just need to, to be clear in my own mind, and perhaps the administration can help me, with that amendment, every business in the city, regardless of whether they have fixed or unfixed furniture or screens, for example, will now receive a, uh, a, re a removal of their outdoor dining fees. That is, there'll be no cost. Okay, so through the yeah, that's my understanding. No fees for um, any outdoor dining. Okay, so this is this is the motion. Then we need to support. It means that every business, every hospitality business, will receive that boost that they need at this time. As Councillor Abbey points out, is a a, a tough time for hospitality. So uh, I too urge members to support the amendment uh, and uh, as Councillor Abbott says it's worth supporting. Thank you. Councillor Carroll. Um, just quickly on administration, uh, as, as, aside from the, the other merits of this motion because it's about me messaging, um, can you, are you able to say whether uh, there is to any extent uh, the removal of dining outdoor fees represents a subsidy uh, in terms of rates that are present that will not be paid. So um, those businesses with outdoor dining, do they presently, um, or if not for the outdoor dining fee, uh, will they, do they see a benefit in, in terms of rates? Are they paying less rates than those businesses whose dining is all, is all indoors? And was this dining fee a measure to level that in any way? Because it's just, I, I, you know, my concern remains about subsidies. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Um, through the presiding member, um, I don't have that data um, in terms of uh, correlation between um, the size or scale of an outdoor dining um, space and what that translates to in terms of um, rent or tenant uh, rates that they're paying towards a landowner. Uh, the purpose of the outdoor dining fee has been around attaching a cost to the use of public space. Um, and then over time, as, as policy has changed, um, as the Deputy Law Mayor indicated earlier, um, other sort of mechanisms came into play. Um, and so at the moment, I, I can't answer that question in terms of the relationship. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes. Now, <laughs> I've never seen that manoeuvre. I must be getting old. It's not quick enough for my feet. But the reason that I moved a motion without uh, to be put on notice, and I would like to check with that later, that I lodged a motion on notice. That was a verbal motion on notice. And um, I think that that should not have been accepted, that motion. However, it has been. Um, but I think the fact that... Um, 
we're having questions like councillor carers asking um, i know most of the answers to that because we've been th through that before but there is no report on how much revenue you are giving up Councillor Kerr is quite right. They do not pay rates on their outside dining. And so that quantum of money, before you make your mind up, should have been there. Councillor Martin and I have made our mind up. So has um, Councillor Abiyad, because we have been here and been availed of all the information. You haven't. You're gonna lose a lot of uh, revenue and the businesses that are contained entirely inside will really kick up. I think to abolish them is the right thing to do, but right thing to do with a full administration report, not just a rush of blood to the head and a popular gesture. Um, so I think this is a, a sad way to go along this, and I think some people may have second thoughts about it if they vote for it. Um, I think the correct way is to get a council report, and it's not too late to withdraw and take this in parts. Um, it's a big thing to do, to take this chunk out of your revenue. It, it is, if Hassam, uh, Councillor Abbey had said it wasn't put up there to- Just to put a point of order, Mr. Yes, yes, Councillor Moran, it says it's part of the budget consideration process. So the report will come, just to assist you. Yes, it will, but we're making a decision to put that into the budget without the proper. We're not, we're not all the other things today have been considered, that's great. But we know that once it goes in, it goes in. Uh, why couldn't we wait two more weeks to get a good report? So we vote. I think it's very important, first principle, is that councillors vote with everything, every bit of information that's available. This isn't, it's to be, as, as Councillor Abbey had said, to be considered in the budget thing. Why can't we consider this with a full range of options? a full range of information that has been taken from you. I think it was incorrect procedure and I will be putting a complaint about that um, later at dinner. My understanding, <laughs> is my, my understanding <laughs> Councillor Moran, that it is correct procedure and therefore I will, I will well, speak to I you over dinner. I have to say that I've been standing in this council for long, longer than anybody here and a verbal lodging of a motion on notice is a lodging of a motion on notice. My understanding is that and, it's, not, um, it's not gone through the proper procedures. <laughs> but if you would like to... Uh, I, will, I will take it up with the powers to be later on. <laughs> Councillor Abraham, is it a... Uh, Lord Mayor, just very quickly, um, uh, I want to say that um, this, uh, this amendment uh, will send out a very strong message, just like many other items um, that we've discussed today, uh, you know, uh, being innovative around different modes of transport and supporting startups, uh, uh, extra car parks, and uh, um, I guess uh, the, the, the greening, yes, of course, uh, how could I forget that? But um, uh, this really sends a strong message that uh, we here in the City of Adelaide uh, are open for business, and, uh, and I do urge all members to uh, support this amendment. Any other speakers, members? Um, I will ask the. Oh, sorry, Councillor Kuros to sum up. Apologies, Councillor Kuros. Well, um, I don't know that amending will be such controversial, um, but uh, I was listening to the arguments and we're, we're all supporting here at businesses and we all want to see our businesses thrive. So in taking on the debate, which what we're here, this is what we're here for today, it's not more there, we're here to debate and listen to every other councillor's views, taking that on board and taking on uh, what Councillor uh, Martin has said in regards to the businesses, um, I think this is uh, fair and, and reasonable to include it in the budget. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members, if we can vote, please, on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Can um, we record that as unanimous? We, we can record that as you want, you unanimous. Can I call a division? <laughs> you, you may call a division. Okay. It's the amendment. Those members voting in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. That was a little bit of exercise just to keep us going. Um, now, I'm going to go back to the Lord, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up, and um, thank you, and now we'll take it in parts as requested.
Okay, we won't take it from that. Okay, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <laughs> Councillor Moran. Uh, that takes us to uh, item 11.12, Councillor Hyde. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I think this is the first motion I move, and uh, yeah, it's quite straightforward. So hopefully, I can get some luck on this motion. Uh, that's seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. With impressive gates at the entrance of Bonkuja and Bruce Street, Red Athens, Pagoda style roof and maze of oriental style restaurants and shops. China Park is a slice of Asian rice in the heart of Adelaide. The heart and the, the, the heart and the vibrancy of any city is of course the food district. And in Adelaide, the food district is China Park. Sorry. For most South Australians, their first exposure to Asia is visiting Adelaide's Chinatown, and for most Asian international tourists and students, their first destination when arriving in Adelaide is Chinatown. And for those people like myself, who have been living in Adelaide for a long time, Chinatown is the only place we can maintain connections with, with where we come from. This is not just a food district to us, but like a monument to the local Chinese community. Winter Street is a core area in Chinatown, other than Rondo Mall. Winter Street is the busiest pedestrian street in Adelaide. However, its paving is breaking down. Its lighting is insufficient. Many of those old, old signages should be removed, but have not yet been removed. There are lots of potential public hazards in this, in this area. If, if it is the first time you arrive at Adelaide and you walk along Winter Street, you will not believe that you are already in the fifth most livable city in the world. The upgrade of Munda Street is needed and the local community needs urgent. The last upgrade of Munda Street was done in 2004, but most people from the community complain the work has not been done properly. It may be due to lack of public consultation or lack of funding. I understand that the last council have set aside around half million dollars for upgrading the Chinatown precinct, and the lawmaker is currently working with the state government to seek more funds. Hence, I urge all of you to support my motion. Therefore, we could have sufficient funds for this project, and we could activate this important project as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, Members? No comments? Okay, back to the movement. Oh, I'll just give you Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry Councillor Hope. Um, look, a very worthwhile motion. <laughs> Some of the community has been asking for, for about a good decade and they've been asking this council to support. Um, so I'd ask members to support this. Thank you. Councillor Ho, sum up? Sum up. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 11.13, uh, Councillor um, now, I wish to move with the, the motion. Thank you very much. I'm pushing my buttons. Um, uh, that, ca <laughs> that, that council considers the continued uh, freeze in the rate in the dollar as part of the 2019 uh, 2020 budget consideration process. I seek. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. So, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, I mean, I'll keep it quite short and uh, simple. I mean, uh, uh, as part of the election process, I mean, I too uh, supported uh, freezing uh, rates, etc. I mean, this has been uh, ongoing now. If we get this through, I think it's about the sixth year. Um, and this is just uh, a council uh, saying to the the business and the, the you know the ratepayers uh, that we are showing constraint. And, and that we are trying to uh, you know, find other means by which we can uh, fulfil our obligations and also all of the aspirational things that we do for the community. So I just think um, uh, we, uh, you know, 
We're here to uh, assist in making the Adelaide a, a very affordable city. I mean, we've been passing a lot of motions that will be very interesting to see how we can uh, budgetarily work them out. But this is one that we haven't had uh, that has been ongoing. And let's just think, um, it just uh, uh, again reaffirms uh, how we are uh, and positive for the business uh, community and making sure that people uh, you know, make this, uh, the city the most affordable uh, in Australia. Anyway, and I come in the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Hine. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just given the time, um, I commend Councillor Noel for bringing this to the Chamber. Uh, and I would just say that if I could, um, in this budget process, have responsibly uh, moved that we actually reduce rates overall, um, if I could have done that and still been financially responsible, I would have done that. Um, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to future budgets where that may be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moran? Yes, I'd like to move a mo uh, an amendment <clears throat> um, that the Council considers a con continued fees in the rate of the dollar as part of this Council term. Uh, meaning for the whole term? For the whole term, yes. Um, <laughs> perhaps if we say for the, for the term of this council. For the term of this council, that's fine. I'm sure that's what, um, I'm sure that's probably what France means. Um, it's just that I'm very nervous about um, people's commitment to rate freezes. It took Phil, Alex Antic and myself. A, a moment, sorry, Councillor. Was that seconding, Councillor Martin? Thank you. A very hard battle as the Lord Mayor. Point of order, Lord Mayor. I'll move the last motion on rate freeze to freeze for two years of Council. Councillor Moran should check her facts. Uh, Councillor Abiat was a very, very fierce opponent to rate freezes until the very last minute. Councillor Moran should check her minutes of the last four years. Deputy Lord Mayor, please and sit down and dear Councillor. Just point of order, please. I don't want, I don't want dissipating information that's not correct. It's not it's a correct. debate. Thank you. Um, but did change his mind at the very end when the Lord Mayor Martin Hazy did. Uh, it, very true. Um, and uh, so, Deputy Lord Mayor, France, you are standing We're on the in the chamber, Deputy Lord Mayor, please. Sure. So, France, I totally applaud your motion of freezing the rates. As I said, it was a very hard battle um, and there was a lot of blood on the floor. I would like that not to happen to this council. Um, it's easy to freeze the rates. When, it's easy to freeze the rates straight out of an election. It's a commitment to say that that is going to be your policy for this council term. And um, we're only considering if something dramatic happens and uh, that the situation changes. But I think it's a, uh, a better thing to, to say this council term, we are going to commit to freezing the rates. And uh, I hope you'll support that. Thank you. Councillor Martin and then Councillor Simmons. Um, yeah, look, I, I think uh, uh, Councillor oh, Canal for the. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Okay, I don't think that is actually what Councillor Moran proposed. Uh, Can I, I, I double check, Councillor Moran? Oh, yes, yeah, uh, sorry, Mr. Jamroy, uh, it doesn't need to be part of the 2000 and 2000, 2009 and 2020. It's considered a continued freeze of rate of the dollar for the term of this council. Full stop. Full stop. Yeah, thank you. Keep it simple. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I, I thank uh, Councillor uh, Canal for the original motion, but um, I, Councillor Moran's amendment is worthwhile. Um, it was a, a hard fought battle to freeze the rate in the dollar um, because it was being used as a two pincer movement to slug our ratepayers. So our businesses and our residents were being um, uh, slugged with increases as a result of valuations from the uh, uh, valuer general. So as the value of the property went up, so did the rates. And then on the other hand, council was increasing the rate in the dollar. So instead of being at, for example, 0.10, it became 0.11 and 0.12 or whatever the figure was. And so there was double dipping. And uh, Councillor Moran was particularly passionate in saying, well, now, hang on, uh, there is an increase that occurs naturally through the valuation process and indeed in the information that's been supplied to us by the administration in the budget forecasts, rate revenue 
this coming financial year without any increase in the rate in the dollar is going from 104 million to 108 million. That is a 4 million increase that comes from revaluation of properties. If the rate in the dollar was to go up, it would rise even further. But the part that uh, upsets our ratepayers, our businesses and our residents, is that they are being slugged twice. Now this is a moderate proposal, and it is moderate because other councils, and I name Unley as an example, actually reduces its rate in the dollar. It, as a matter of practice, as its revenue goes up, rewards ratepayers by decreasing the rate in the dollar. This proposal is merely freezing it. And that's a, a, a great advance uh, for this council. We are freezing the rate in the dollar for four years and providing certainty, providing certainty to residents and businesses so that they know that any increase that applies to their rates comes solely from the valuation of the property. As their wealth increases, our revenue increases. No double dipping. I urge members to support this. This is possibly one of the most important tenets of this council. This will establish our reputation as a business-friendly, resident-friendly council. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, Councillor Sims, I'll just go to Councillor Carer first because he did have his hand up. Councillor Sims. Very generous of you, Councillor Kira. Uh, look, um, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. And you know, I will say from the outset, I understand uh, Councillor Moran's perspective on this. Indeed, Councillor Moran has been a long-term uh, advocate in this space. I do remember on the last term of Councillor, uh, at last term of Council, Councillor Moran pushing this very strongly uh, with support of Councillor Martin. So both of them have been uh, long-term advocates around rate freezes. Um, just as their position has been consistent in support, I must say mine has been consistent uh, against rate freezes. I'm not just against this amendment, I'm against the substantive as well. So I'll use this opportunity to speak in relation to both. I think it's easy when we talk about uh, rate freezes to um, expect staff to do more for less. And you know, I've actually worked in organisations where they've faced efficiency dividends and, um, and budget cuts. I understand many members here on this council run business and you know I respect your perspective. I'd ask that you respect my perspective as someone who's actually worked in organisations within these parameters. And well, I've seen the impact of, um, of job cuts in those sectors. You know, it creates huge instability within the organisation. It makes things very difficult for staff that are trying to do their jobs. Um, and it also does impact on services. And you know, if you doubt that, talk to anybody who's been on the phone talking to a government service, Centrelink for instance, where you're stuck on the phone for hours and hours. The reality is once you reduce the revenue base and you start putting in efficiency dividends, it makes things very difficult for people on the front line. And it's the community that really fills the brunt of that. And uh, that's one of the reasons I don't support uh, rate freezes, whether it's for a year or whether it's for the full council term. I don't think it's the right approach for us to take. I also don't want to see this council be in a position where we have to knock back good ideas because we don't have money in the kitty to fund them. You know, and I know a lot of you probably think I come from a kind of um, left-wing crazy political tradition, but there is a, a common thread to all political um, traditions, and that is there is no such thing as magic pudding economics. You have to actually have money in the kitty to fund the things that you want. And Rates revenue is the way that we can fund the things that we want. And you know, councillors tonight have come to this chamber with a range of ideas. We've committed to look at them in the budget process. I'd like to be able to fund them and have the money to do it. And rates is the way that we can do that. So there are lots of good ideas here. But the reality is when we limit our revenue base, we limit our capacity to do good work and there will be cuts. Make no mistake, Edward Scissorhands will be coming to Adelaide City Council. There will be cuts if we continue with this approach to our revenue base. So I urge councillors to think carefully about this and to keep this in the back of their minds. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerrow. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, well, it's, 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 it's slightly reassuring to hear councillor Sims talk about magic pudding economics and how there is no magic pudding. Um, that's correct. There's no such thing as, as a magic pudding. And uh, I'd suggest you're, you're partway there, Councillor Sins, and understanding uh, how an economy works. Um, I, think, oh, thank you. I, I think that, uh, I do think this is actually, I, 
on the face of it, a new council, I actually think this this is this this looks a good idea because just the pub test. Uh, if you say, oh look, we're going to freeze the rate uh, in the dollar for the coming year, people just go, mm, yeah. If you say that we're going to freeze the rate in dollar for the next four years, they will sit up and take notice. Um, it makes a, a, a big difference uh, in terms of the messaging. It, uh, look, uh, South Australia is the highest taxed uh, state in the country. Um, there, there, there's been no question about that. It is no surprise that there is also a correlation between that and how we have been falling behind economically. Um, I think that if we actually said, look, we, and can I just also say, Councillor Sims is talking about uh, Edward Scissorhands and, uh, you know, it's all in dark shadows or whatever other um, film like that director um, you can mention. Uh, he's talking, Councillor Sims is Tim Burton, he's talking as if, um, he's talking as if there are rate cuts looming. This is not a rate cut, uh, sorry, a cut in rates intake. We know from the uh, budgeting already the rates intake is projected to go up by $4 million. It's going from $104 million to $108 million. So there are no cuts uh, involved in us saying, let's freeze the rates. What we can do is we can say to a new state government, when the next time we say to them, look, we need money for, for projects that ought rightfully to be spent on by the state government and, and that we have been funding predominantly in the past, uh, which has been the case with a number of projects, we can say to them, look, we have uh, we have stepped up uh, to the plate. We have actually taken action. We have, we are going to freeze the rate for four years. I think it's a good uh, uh, bargaining tool. It's a good arguing point. I think it's a good idea. But interested to hear um, the other side. There is one. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Councillor Kuros. As a ratepayer um, to the City of Adelaide, I would probably welcome this, but as a person that understands business, to have a rate freeze for the term of the whole four years of council, um, it, can, it can affect um, the whole budget process for the whole year. We, like Councillor Sim says, and I agree with him, um, the whole term, sorry, I agree with him, we need to make sure that we have enough money in the kitty. And I, as a new councillor, I don't think I can support this um, for the whole term. I'm happy to support it for the first year maybe, but um, for the whole term, I would have to look at every budget process um, each year. Thank you. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, um, Lord Mayor. Look, um, rate freeze. So we've heard a few things before. At the moment, we're going through, if you've seen some of the budget stuff we've brought in tonight, uh, there's been uh, taking a hit, taking a hit, taking a hit, taking a hit, picking up revenue on U parks, picking up revenues in some areas. And we need to, the most important part of this process right now for new councillors is for us to understand this budget for 1920 and how we balance that budget with our rates to deliver outcomes. So we're talking about magic pudding economics and Councillor Kerr is talking about another form of economics where there's $4 million a year that's going to be sitting there. We have a CPI increase on every single supplier that's applying to the city of Adelaide. We have a staffing agreement around wages that's going to see those wages increase every year as a result of CPI. And if we don't have a valuation increase, and if we don't have a new rateable increase because the economy is taking a hit, how will we balance the budget in 2021 and beyond? I don't know, and I don't have I don't have the answer for that. What I know for now is we have a responsibility to balance the budget for the 1920. It may be that the next budget we will do the same. It may that we may not. I don't know the answer to that. Depending on the economic conditions and depending on efficiencies from council and council administration that they can deliver for us. But what I want to do as a council, I want to talk about picking up our revenue. I'm sick and tired about talking cut, 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 cut. I want to talk about business opportunities that help us pick up revenue and shoulder pain off ratepayers. These are the things I want to talk about. I want to have every single council meeting talk about business opportunities that increase revenue of council so we can become almost like a Monte Carlo where we're not charging our rate our ratepayers any rates because we're really good in business. At the moment, we're 50% of the way there. I think we can do better than this over the next four years. What we can promise our ratepayers is an actual real rate drop by dropping the rate of the dollar, provided we can pick up revenue from business. So why don't we all sit down and start talking seriously about business ideas that generate significant revenue for council? 
That's how you reduce the rates of this council. You know, freezer, freezing is not good enough. We can take it a step back and reduce the rate on the dollar over the next four years if we start talking about revenue increases. Because at the moment, at the moment, I am happy to move that motion. I'm not kidding you. Provided it's, provided it's pegged to revenue increase. I'm happy to amend it right now. Councillors, councillors, we're no. actually debating this amendment so, right now. I'm happy to foreshadow that that's what I'll do. I'll bring in a motion that talks to reversing the rate in the dollar, provided we pick up business revenue in this council. No more cuts to you parks, giving away, giving away free one hour parking, okay? No more cuts to absolutely everything that we're doing. Councillors, councillors, please. Definitely. No more assets sitting around not generating revenue, unless there's a community outcome as a result. So we're talking aquatic centre, we're talking about all those businesses. So please, members, consider this in the 1920 budget. Freeze the rate for one year, and then let's talk about raising revenue as a council. I'm just going to ask the CEO if he wants to make any comment. Three a little bit. I just want to be really clear that council members understand exactly what is, is going to be the result of tonight's discussion. Freezing the rates in the dollar may be clearly an intent, but it is the fact that you set the rates on a year by year basis. So you're clearly setting your intent, but every year you're required to, to set the, the budget. So you'll need to consider the rate in the dollar as part of the budget process, not only this year, but future years. The word consider is really important and is non-binding. And um, at the end of the day, you need to comply with the Local Government Act, which means that, um, and we've detailed that in the evidence response, you really need to sit down each year and, and consider all of the aspects of the budget before you set. I do, however, recognise the intent is very, very clear uh, for the four year period. Thanks, Lord. Thank you. Uh, and is there any other members? No, I'll go back to Councillor Moran. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, CEO. The word is consider. And it's a message, as Councillor Kerr said, exactly as uh, Councillor Knowles is still a, just a message because we haven't got to that part of the budget yet. So just as he's virtue signalling that we will aim at that, I'm just expanding it to the whole term. I'm so glad that Monte Carlo's come up again because um, that was a frame we used some time ago by myself. Um, to flag that we would aim at no rates. Well, it was my idea, Hassan, and you argued against it at the time, but I'm so glad you've come on board now. Now, when we decided to freeze the rates for six years, what happened? We had the same arguments. It was great. I totally agree with Hassan. We need to get rid of our non-performing assets. We need to make our businesses great. One doesn't preclude doing it this way. I have never seen um, under Mr Goldstone a administration so focused on squeezing everything out uh, so we don't have to squeeze it out of our ratepayers. Um, Councillor Abbey had said he's sitting here and it's hit, 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 hit on our businesses, but he's not excluding a hit, hit, hit on our poor old ratepayers who were living there, who if you weren't, uh, Councillor Abbey, you would agree with this motion, but of course you won't be voting for this motion and you will be taking your team along with you. And I object to that not listening. Councillor Kuros said she listens. She didn't, she just pinched. Um, but uh, Councillor Moran, uh, there is a magic, there is a magic, there is a magic pudding and that is running our businesses well and profitably. We sit on a lot of good businesses and we're starting to really get them working again under the, uh, this, the, uh, the um, mantle of this administration council, and that's great. And unless something catastrophic happens, we will get our freeze out rates. Why wouldn't we say that to everybody on the outset? It is considerate. That is our aim, and that's what we should always be aiming at. I totally take on Councillor Hyde's uh, point. I was nearly going to amend it that we we forecast that we free it freeze the rates and also looking at copying only and looking at reductions. I think that's next. You move that next. But at the moment, let's just give them the give them the promise of what you did say in your election that you supported freezing the rates. When you put in your election material, you support freezing the rates. You did not put a, a, a apostrophe after that and say for the first year. You they meant you to do to mean that for the whole term. So that's what I'm saying. It's simple. 
Thank you. Council members, can we please vote on the amendment? Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Division. Division call. Those members voting in favour of the amendment, please rise. Councillor Moran, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Martin. Declared against. Um, we go back to the original motion. Uh, did any other members wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Sims. Look, I don't support this either um, for the reasons that I um, outlined and I, I would encourage uh, members to think very carefully about this. I do welcome the comments made about looking at alternative revenue sources. I did try and suggest that with e-scooters um, and that was presented as some sort of Trotskyite theory. But really, it makes complete sense that when we are looking at the share economy, we look at how we can get some bang for our buck. And I will continue to advocate for that on council. And uh, I look forward to members joining me in that endeavor, rather than going down the slash and burn path that we have seen with budgets at other levels. Thank you, councillor. If there's no other, can I go back to councillor Kamal to sum up? <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Okay, look, just a couple of quick words. And yes, I do appreciate the debate around it and also the sentiment of putting it for the whole term. And I, look, I, I, in theory, that works for me. The difficulty I have is that because, because uh, I am not sure of the future, and no, I'm not sure of the future, I'm happy to do it for, for the first year and let us go through that. And certainly we can have further conversations as we're all across the budget and also I, I uh, you know, I'm always wary of uh, what what will change in, in the year to come, and uh, that gives us at least an option. Certainly, the word considers does uh, does release it to a degree, but at least let us just look at that first, and then we can jump a bigger uh, jump uh, the bigger puddle uh, when we actually get across more and also understand further uh, all the implications of all of the uh, the, the motions that that we put forward uh, this evening, and then see what we can do in the future. But certainly, you know, we we'll work forward on that. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillors, can I ask you now to vote? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <laughs> Members, that takes us to uh, motions without notice. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, <clears throat> wish to move. We're ready. Oh, there we go. Um, yes, that council acknowledges heritage property as a significant cultural and economic driver in the City of Adelaide, investigates a heritage rate rebate incentive scheme for the City of Adelaide uh, ratepayers who invest in and maintain their heritage listed properties, consider measures and incentives that promote the occupancy or restoration of vacant and dilapidated properties, allocate a budget for this program as part of the 2019-2020 budget considerations. Of a conflict of interest because I, I own a um, heritage listed property. Oh, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillors. Um, seconded by Councillor Kouros. Um, look, I would normally not accept a motion without notice, except this came through on notice and has got the administration comment. And it's also there's some time sensitivity because of our budget deliberations. So, in this instance, uh, I'll accept that motion without notice. Okay, thank you. I'll just speak to it very quickly. Um, heritage is obviously very important uh, to the culture and the character and the comfort of the city. Um, particularly in Southwater, it has a very distinct look and feel. We have many streets that are, that are entirely her heritage listed. Um, uh, and I think we need to report, reward the good behaviour um, uh, of the ratepayers that take care of their properties. And also it's about signalling uh, to those that don't take as good a care of their properties uh, to say that uh, we're willing to, to work with you and give you a little bit of an incentive um, uh, if you step up your game uh, a little bit because it, it really just adds to the amenity of the entirety of the city. I'll put it there, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perros. I agree with everything that uh, uh, Councillor Hyde has said. I just, uh, this rate rebate is very significant, um, would have helped a lot in North Adelaide. It's a, it's a very much a heritage area and uh, the most common um, discussions I have with people that own heritage homes is that they would love to have some support and some um, rebate, rate rebate. So I support this motion wholeheartedly and it is very much um, a very important part of the culture of our city and, and who we are. Thank you, Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor. 
Uh, thank you, Lord Miller, God, to support this motion. I'm specifically interested in two things. I think what this will do is, um, I know people that appreciate heritage will always buy heritage, but also gives an incentive to people that are looking at heritage properties to actually invest in them, buy them, and live in them because they know there's some type of variety rebate that could potentially support them throughout that process. And it gives them the incentive to be able to buy and also provide the upkeep uh, for some of those heritage properties in the city. But what I'm mostly interested in is the third point. You consider measures and incentives around promoting the occupancy and restoration of vacant and the dilapidated properties around the city. If you've seen North Terrace, it's a real shame. I mean, there is no boulevard in the world that does not have heritage properties activated on it. And North Terrace is a clear example of how we're not activating heritage and how we're not working with it. I want this to be able to use as a tool where we have a carrot and even a stick approach where we could potentially fund the incentive scheme through penalising people that completely ignore heritage and make the buildings completely fall apart. Now, I'm not talking about people that can't afford it here. I'm talking about people that can afford it. Potentially people that are... Sorry, Robin. Sorry. Councillor Hyde just left the Sorry. chamber and it's his motion. That's right. Sorry. Um, oh, no, that's no, okay. Not a problem at all. Um, I think there's an opportunity here to be able to fund the heritage rate rebate incentive scheme by actually looking at the people that are not activating heritage, ignoring their heritage, building them, and make them fall completely apart. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how the administration will manage that and what levers we've got uh, through policy uh, and through our legislation to be able to influence that outcome because I have no problems whatsoever waiting more uh, buildings that are vacant and they've been left to fall into complete disrepair uh, by developers and building owners that have chosen to ignore their properties despite that they can afford it and activate it. And North Terrace is a prime example. So look, I'm really hoping that through this motion we're going to be able to reach an outcome where we celebrate our heritage, we conserve our heritage, uh, and really understand the value that it provides to tourism, economic development, but also uh, social cohesion and culture within our city. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, any other speakers to the motion? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, members. If I can now ask for the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Members, that now takes us to item 13, which is exclusion to the public. Just wait for the members to come back in. Thank you, members. Um, so we have six items, uh, and I'll require a motion for each of them to enable us to exclude. No, I don't. Oh, sorry, apologies. Sorry. I only need one motion to exclude for the report, which is 14.1.1. If I could thank you, Councillor Moran and Seconder, uh, Councillor High. Uh, does anyone want to just speak to it? If not, Councillor, could you sum up? It's one, one motion with uh, six recommendations. One motion to exclude and then six recommendations. And then one recommendation six parts. No, there's six recommendations. So, Councillor Moran, did you wish to sum up? Sum up. Thank you. Uh, councillors, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, members of the gallery and staff? No? Not associated? <laughs> Thank you for your attendance at this meeting. Um, those not associated with 14.1.1, now please leave the chamber.
and I'll open to the public. Thank you, members. It's been a long meeting. I look forward to seeing you all at dinner. <laughs> Thank you.